A few minutes later, Jane walked into the office. The three men stared at her for a while without saying a word for some reason. Jane felt a little uncomfortable. Um, what can I do for you, Mr. Woods? She finally asked. Nick looked at Xavier, who maintained his silence and kept staring at Jane. Even John was looking elsewhere, but he wasn't saying anything. Finally, Nick broke the silence. Jane, uh, I have something to ask you. Jane slowly raised her head. Yes, Mr. Frankie. I've been hearing you guys talk about Valentine's Day for the past couple days. Why are you talking about this in the office? Upon hearing Nick's question, Jane blinked. To understand what he meant. Why do you want to know about Valentine's Day? Nick tried again. That tell us what you expect from the day. Jane nodded. Well, the holiday is pretty romantic, has a long history, um, culturally and traditionally. Most couples pledge their love for each other on that day. Xavier thought about it. He felt that Valentine's was too much of a commitment for one relationship. He'd avoided it like the plague. Xavier, maybe you should take a holiday with Ophelia. Xavier gave him a cold look, and John quickly lowered his head. Then Xavier said, Perhaps. Think about it. Only then did Jane realize it was Xavier who wanted to know. Seeing that he and Ophelia had such a good relationship, Jane felt relieved. She had been tense since she walked into Nick's office. Mr. Woods, actually, Ophelia's never had a Valentine date before. Jane kindly reminds him. Xavier was shocked. It's possible. Damon and Ophelia never had a chance to do that, Jane continued. Both of them were busy working the last time they had a Valentine's Day together. John thought this was a good opportunity. Xavier, I think you can give Ophelia a romantic Valentine's Day. Nick said to Jane, Jane, what do women usually expect on this day? Jane thought for a moment. Usually, uh, just flowers, gifts, maybe, like, dinner together, going to the movies. Nick felt that it was quite ordinary. But then, Valentine's Day was just to join in on the fun. It wasn't about grand gestures of love. It was about love. He felt that with Xavier, he wouldn't ever do such a thing. What does Ophelia like? asked Xavier. Jane looked at Xavier. Was he giving a present to Ophelia? She said Ophelia wasn't lacking for anything anyways. Um, Ophelia usually likes stuff on more personal and emotional levels, Jane replied. Xavier scowled. Material things are easy to do. How, how do we deal with this emotional stuff? Actually, Mr. Woods, you would know a little bit more about that than me, Jane said with a smile. Nick showed her out after that. Once she left, Nick turned to Xavier. Do you have any ideas? Xavier smiled, but chose not to answer Nick. Only John realized it felt like Xavier had already been planning something for Valentine's Day. Perhaps this whole conversation with Jane had been a sham. Xavier suddenly asked, Nick, is there any progress on the Hoffman family story? Nick was taken aback by this sudden change in topic, but he recovered quickly. Not yet, but John and I both think that we should have someone do some snooping. Xavier glanced at John. You got someone in mind? John wiped his brow before speaking. Yes, but, uh, you probably wouldn't have heard me. Xavier narrowed his eyes, guessing John's intentions. He nodded. It's good that you know that. I don't want Ophelia to come into contact with the Hoffmans anymore. John continued. So, we're still thinking of other ways. Xavier looked at the time. Keep thinking. Will do, said Nick. Xavier walked out of the office and headed straight for Ophelia. After Xavier and Ophelia left the office, they went to a nearby restaurant to eat. Xavier held Ophelia's hand as they walked past the shops. Ophelia felt Xavier was a little silent today. Xavier, why aren't you talking today? Am I not? Ophelia shook her head. No, you barely spoke during dinner. Is you wrong? Xavier shook his head. No, no, not at all. Ophelia stopped in front of the window of a jewelry store. She looked at the platinum pear in the window. It was a simple design. But the diamond on the ring was inlaid with the shape of a star. It looked quite special to her. Xavier noticed Ophelia staring at the ring and asked, You like it? Ophelia immediately shook her head when she heard Xavier's voice. I was just admiring it. If you like it, I can buy it, said Xavier simply. 
Before she could say anything, a shop assistant saw them admiring the ring and stepped outside. If you two like it, you can take a look at the shop. There are a lot of different styles inside. Ophelia shook her head. No, thank you. We're just here to look. The assistant continued. You two seem to be very fond of each other. Don't you want to buy a ring or something like that as a Valentine's Day gift? She added with a smile. Besides, we have a discount right now on all items. It's definitely worth it. Ophelia glanced at Xavier, who was glaring at the assistant, and didn't look like he wanted to go in. Therefore, she smiled and said to the assistant, No need, we have other matters to attend to. With that, Ophelia held Xavier's hand and walked forward. Xavier looked at Ophelia and smiled. He didn't want to enter the shop because he felt it wasn't worthy of his woman. As his woman, he would definitely give the best in the world to her. He held Ophelia's hand and said, Slow down. After they had covered a stretch of road, they stood in front of a bakery and waited for Xavier's car to come pick them up. Ophelia's eyes sparkled as she looked at the delicately made cakes inside. They looked very tasty. Xavier looked at Ophelia. He looked over at the cakes and said, If you want to eat some, I can get you some. Are you crazy? I'll be back if I eat this, she exclaimed. Xavier rolled his eyes when he heard Ophelia. With your body, how fat can you be, he said. Sometimes he really just couldn't understand this girl. Ophelia's face turned red. It's easy to get fat from dessert. Xavier put his arm around Ophelia. Maybe it's better for you to be fat. It's more comfortable. Ophelia's face turned even redder as she turned her head away from Xavier, who pulled her towards him and into the bakery. Upon entering, the fragrant aroma permeated the air, causing her appetite to surge. Xavier pulled Ophelia to the cake cap and asked, which one do you want to eat? Ophelia originally wanted to remain reserved, but after seeing so many cakes in front of her, her eyes lit up. She wanted to eat every one of them, but she couldn't be so greedy. After looking around for what seemed like forever, Ophelia chose a small one. This one. Xavier turned to the baker. We'll have four. Ophelia was stunned. You want some too? I'll finish it in just one bite, so we either get four of these or you choose a bigger pastry. Ophelia chose a strawberry-flavored mousse and a cheesecake. As she took the two cakes out, Ophelia's face was covered in a big smile. Xavier, thank you. She was very happy. This was Xavier's first gift to her. So happy, Xavier asked. Looking at her smile, it was obvious that she really did like his gesture. These pastries added up to less than $12, yet she was ecstatic. It was too easy to satisfy her. Ophelia nodded her head repeatedly and said with a smile, Yeah, because you bought them for me. Xavier put his arm around her shoulder. Let's go home. All right. After getting in the car, Ophelia opened the strawberry mousse and took a scoop with a spoon. Then she placed it next to Xavier's mouth and asked, Do you want it? Xavier shook his head. You enjoy. Xavier put down his cell phone and looked at Ophelia beside him, watching her eat with relish. He certainly wanted to try it out as well. <laughs> that delicious? Seeing that there was a bit of white cream on the corner of Ophelia's mouth, Xavier pointed at it and said, Hey, there's some on the corner of your mouth. Ophelia tried wiping it, but she couldn't get at it, even after a few tries. Here, let me help, said Xavier. Ophelia leaned towards him, angling her mouth towards Xavier. He suddenly felt his heartbeat quicken. He couldn't resist. He reached behind her head and pulled her face closer to his own. He lowered his head and pressed his lips onto Ophelia's mouth, then opened his mouth and ate the bit of cream. Ophelia was stunned. Her eyes widened. Xavier, I... But then Xavier kissed Ophelia's lips without hesitation. There was a sweet and sour taste. He took the initiative to deepen the kiss. Ophelia was in a state of complete confusion, allowing Xavier to attack her with his tongue. After a long while, Xavier finally let go of Ophelia. With a gentle expression, he stretched out his finger to wipe the corner of Ophelia's mouth. Too sweet. Xavier's voice was a bit hoarse. Ophelia's face turned very red. Was Xavier teasing her just now? Ophelia immediately pulled away from Xavier, embarrassed. He do this in the car, in front of the driver of all people. Nathan, the driver, could still drive so calmly. Ophelia turned her head to the side and looked out into the street. She continued to eat the cake. She found it tasteless now. Xavier knew it was awkward for Ophelia, 
still, he didn't disturb her. He started looking at his phone. They didn't speak until they reached home. Ophelia opened the car door before Nathan had even brought the car to a stop and rushed into the house as fast as she could. Xavier was speechless. Was she still shy? Nathan, you should go home and get some rest as well. Yes, sir. Xavier followed her into the room. In the living room, he saw Ophelia's bag on the sofa, but she was nowhere to be found. Where's Ophelia? Xavier asked Liza when he saw her. Liza replied. She went to the washroom. Xavier waited. When Ophelia came out of the bathroom, she saw Xavier standing there waiting for her. That night, after Ophelia fell asleep, Xavier called his friend Kelly. Yum, exclaimed Kelly, using his true name. He's a rare surprise. Kelly, did I disturb you? No, Kelly answered. What can I do for you? Xavier had been drawing a design for a ring. He said, I want you to make a custom pair of rings. <laughs> Am I hearing things? Kelly's voice sounded surprised. Married? Xavier ignored her. I just sent you the design I want. Let me know what you think. Kelly smiled. Okay. In three days. In a hurry, are you? Yes, I'm afraid. I'll uh, have to trouble you. William, don't worry. For you, I'll do anything. Xavier continued. You won't lose any money. Then can I also save the red packet? Xavier smiled after hearing that. That depends entirely on you. With that, Xavier hung up. The corner of his mouth curled into a satisfied smile. This was the surprise Xavier had prepared for Ophelia during Valentine's Day. He hoped she would like the gift. It was a new day. It was the day that Hillcrest opened to a new regular board of directors. John told Xavier the news. I'm going to the meeting. Excellent. This time, John drove to Hillcrest alone. Before he could walk into the meeting room, John saw a woman. He wondered who she was for a while. Emily looked at John, who was standing right next to her, and asked, Who are you? John? Emily immediately narrowed her eyes upon hearing his name. So, you're the equity agent hired by Ophelia. She pretends to be all sweet and kind, but she's really a monster in disguise. John was upset. Excuse me? What did you say? Emily scoffed at him. Don't pretend like you didn't hear me. Get out of my face, all right? John glanced at the documents in Emily's arm. Are those the documents for the meeting? I'd like a copy. No, they're not for you. You don't get any documents. You're just a stupid equity agent exclaimed Emily. There was a look of displeasure on John's face. Give me the documents I want. Mr. Hill and Mr. Hoffman are well aware of my request. Don't make me take this matter to them. Emily scowled. Go ahead. See if I care. Is that so? Yes, Emily said confidently. This may be your Hillcrest, but you don't even have the right to speak. John glared at Emily. Richard must be blind to treat someone like this woman as a treasure. It was a good thing Ophelia didn't have a relationship with her family right now. Furthermore, she had the support of Xavier, so Ophelia was doing very well. John didn't go into the meeting room. He stood by the door of the meeting room with his arms crossed, waiting for Richard or Andrew to come in. Not long after, they appeared together. Emily immediately stepped forward. Dad, you're here. Andrew glanced at Emily. Why isn't Vice President John sitting inside? Because she refused to give me a copy of today's documents, John said loudly. Andrew looked at John, then at Richard. Didn't they ask someone to prepare an extra copy for him? Why wasn't this done? Richard looked at his daughter. Emily, didn't I give you an extra copy moments ago? I, um... Emily stammered, but couldn't say anything to get her way. John sneered at her. It looks like you don't want me to attend the meeting. If that's the case, don't ask me to come over again. My time is precious. Andrew grew angry at John. He thinks he was talking to them like that. But he couldn't say anything to John. So he vented his anger on Emily. Emily, hurry and get him a copy. Did you know who he is? Can go. Oh, Emily lowered her head. Richard handed Emily a USB drive with the document. Here, go and print out a copy. Emily took it and left without a backward glance. Andrew looked at Richard angrily. This kind of incompetence is it any wonder that I keep asking for a competent assistant. Richard
Richard felt embarrassed as he stood aside with his head lowered. John had not spoken at all this time, watching the show. He had heard Andrew just now. He seemed to be lacking a proper assistant. Emily wasn't up to the mark. That was the case. It was also an opportunity for John to do something about it. Andrew was a bit more polite towards John. John, let's go in and wait. John also put up a fake smile. Okay. When the meeting was about to begin, Emily put a copy of the document in front of John. Good job, John said to her, giving the document a nonchalant glance. Seats here aren't easy to sit in. Emily was confused for a moment. She didn't understand what he meant at all. Andrew, on the other hand, understood what was being said. To say that Richard had been so arrogant as to ask Emily to be his assistant. With stability, she wasn't even qualified to carry his shoes. Andrew turned to her. Miss Hill, we're going to have the meeting now. You can leave. Emily understood what Andrew meant. She clenched her hands tightly. Mrs. Hoffman said I can stay here. My mother can say whatever she wants, but you are not the director or the chairman of this company. You are my assistant. Therefore, you will do what I ask. Now leave, Andrew said, not bothering to be polite. These words made Richard lose faith. He stammered. Mr. Hoffman, are you trying to go back on your mother's word? John looked at the two of them. Is this internal matter so important that it has to be discussed now? Perhaps I should leave then. As I said, my time is precious. Andrew immediately comforted John. He dared not offend him now. He was Xavier's man, after all. The two of them were unhappy. They might make a move against the Hoffmans. He glared right at Emily, but said nothing against her again. He would have to deal with her on his own. But later. Right now, presenting a unified front against John and his boss, Xavier, was more important. The stakes were high. Hillcrest was a big deal now. Swallowing his complaints about Emily, Andrew said, The meeting is about to begin. Richard, seeing that Andrew didn't say anything to Emily, pulled her down into the chair next to him. John put on his headphones and immediately contacted Xavier. Andrew glanced at John. He seemed to wear those headphones every time. Was he something special about it? John saw the doubt in Andrew's eyes. Director Hoffman, is there a problem? It seems that you always wear those headphones to a meeting, so I'm a bit curious. I'm always expecting a call, sir. I do not want my phone to ring or vibrate as it might disrupt the meeting, so I keep it plugged into my ears. It's a force of habit, John said calmly. Andrew didn't quite believe him. However, he couldn't accuse John of anything without proof. He had to be accommodating to John's wishes. Andrew looked away and said, So it is time to start the meeting. He looked unhappy, and John could see it. John smiled. He had never felt more alive. The meeting did not last long. Andrew Hoffman had briefly explained the work and the projects in which the company was involved in. John could tell that he wanted to take all of the remaining funds out of Hillcrest and transfer them over to the Hoffman Group. Therefore, Hillcrest would be an empty shell of a company. John noticed Richard Hill and Emily sitting opposite him. They both seemed to be having a hard time keeping their anger in check. Any other questions? Andrew asked. No one present dared to make a sound. After all, they were all subservient to Andrew, who owned most of the shares and dictated how Hillcrest operated. Andrew looked at John. Anything I can clarify to you, Mr. Brown? I'm only interested in money. I'm not worried about anything else. John made his stance clear. Mr. Hoffman, don't forget what you promised me. Of course, that goes without saying. I assure you that you will get your return on investment, Andrew replied. Sounds good. No further questions, John said. After the meeting was over, Andrew left in a hurry. John was about to leave, but he was stopped by Richard. Mr. Brown, please wait. John looked at the former chairman. Yes, is there something I can do for you? Richard Hill nodded. Unfortunately, he looked slightly unsure as he looked around him. John also saw that Richard looked uncomfortable. Seeing his eyes moving about so rapidly, he found it funny. Is Hillcrest so heavily surveyed that even its founder can't seek privacy? Seeing Richard's troubled face, John stood up and said, If everything is all right, Mr. Hill, I will take my leave. Wait a minute. Emily gestured towards the door. We can talk here. John sized up the tiny room that was devoid of any furniture. It was right next to the conference room. Richard looked inside. Is this all right? Yes, Dad, this is completely safe. Emily nodded. Richard Hill nodded and looked at John. 
I need to talk to you in private. It'll take a while, but it's very important for the future of Hillcrest. The three walked into the room. John smiled. And what would Mr. Hill like to talk about with me? You're currently holding Ophelia's shares, aren't you? We can join forces and remove the Hoffman Group from controlling Hillcrest, Richard said. He knew that with his shares and Ophelia's, they would have a majority stake and could dictate terms to Andrew. John kept smiling. It looks like Mr. Hill hasn't figured out the situation. How much of your 30% shares can you really use? It would be very futile if your shares were already tied up elsewhere. I'm certain the Hoffman Group has taken care of that. Richard shivered. How could this man know all of this sensitive information? Of the 30% Richard held, 20% had already been mortgaged to the bank due to payments on the villa as well as the Hillcrest offices. As for the remaining 10%, I think you should keep that for a retirement fund, John continued. Ultimately, it is a useless endeavor and I have nothing to gain by it. Hearing his words, Richard's face fell and he looked defeated. However, it was the truth. I can convince the other shareholders, Richard said feebly. John shook his head. Looks like you are completely in the dark, Mr. Hill. Do you really think Andrew Hoffman would just take a 30% stake to compete a hostile takeover? John sensed that it was more than enough information. The only thing left was for Richard Hill to understand how helpless his situation was. John reached for the door to leave. She's Ophelia! I want to see her! Richard's voice came from behind. John turned around. I shall convey your message, Mr. Hill. I'm her father. How dare she not see me? She is still Ophelia Hill, Richard said angrily. John got angry at Richard's words and grimaced at his lack of manners. Please do not take my politeness for weeks and do not talk about Mrs. Woods like that ever again. With that, John left, certain there was not an ounce of humanity in the hills. When Xavier heard about what happened, his expression didn't change at all. How do you think we should handle this? John asked. Nick decided to voice his opinion. I think Richard Hill still hasn't woken up. Old man's still delusional enough to think he can take back control of Hillcrest. Xavier remained silent. He didn't seem to be listening to either John or Nick. Xavier? John asked. Xavier glanced at him. I'll take care of it. All right, as you wish. John backed off. Since Xavier had already decided, Nick and John didn't have to worry about it now. That would save them a lot of trouble. John had something else to tell Xavier. Xavier, there's another matter that we have to discuss. Xavier put down his phone. Speak. Didn't you say that Richard Hill wanted to send his daughter Emily to infiltrate the Hoffmans? John asked. Xavier looked at John curiously. Yes, do you have any ideas about that? John nodded vigorously. This is the best way for us to get information about the Hoffmans and the Hoffman group. Nick immediately understood what John meant. Who do you want to send there? Ella, John replied. As soon as Xavier Woods heard the name, his expression changed. Nick stroked his chin and pondered. John was incredibly intelligent for this. Ella Carter was indeed an outstanding candidate. With her abilities, she would definitely be able to gather relevant information. John and Nick waited for Xavier to speak. Xavier was clear about the relationship between them. While Ella was a good choice, he didn't want anything to do with her, let alone having her gather information from the Hoffmans. Letting Ella go to the Hoffmans also meant his identity would be revealed to her, and that would make things a lot more complicated. Nick looked at Xavier and knew what he was thinking, but for now, this seemed like the best course of action. Xavier, sometimes we have to make sacrifices. I think your grandfather sent Ella here so she could be of some use. He knew that she would be. Nick thought aloud. John nodded. Xavier, your relationship with her is completely work-based. Why are you so worried that she's going to destroy you? Xavier glanced at John. You know about that? John answered empathetically. Of course I know. We all know that she likes you, but you're married and you're afraid of her. I think giving her something to do will distract her. If she knows this is causing you problems, she would work even harder. Isn't that killing two birds with one stone? Nick and John had the same opinion. It was better to let Ella be a spy on their behalf. Xavier stood up. It'll lead to complications. My identity will be revealed. John answered. Mate, there are some things that can't be hidden anymore. How long are we going to run away from them? Xavier glanced at Nick. I'm afraid Ophelia won't be able to handle it. Suddenly, everyone went quiet. I don't think that Ophelia is an unreasonable person, Nick continued. I mean, she'll understand, right? Xavier pursed his lips and didn't say a word. 
Mixed it up. Xavier, you're afraid of losing her, aren't you? Of course he was. He was used to seeing her every day. What would happen if he lost her? We really think of Ophelia as quite weak, don't we? Nick didn't know why he had so much confidence in Ophelia. Perhaps she was much stronger than any of them thought. John stood up. Xavier, you told us before that life is a gamble. Why don't we gamble again this time? If Ophelia is incapable or unable to withstand the scrutiny, we can withdraw well within time. Xavier suddenly realized how cruel reality was. Would this be worth it? More importantly, would Ophelia be okay with this? Xavier, do you really love her? John looked at Xavier and asked him. Xavier got up and declared, All right, let's take a risk on this. Because he was in love, Xavier wanted to bet on himself. When Nick and John heard his words, they were sure this was the Xavier Woods they had always known. In the blink of an eye, it was Valentine's Day. On this day, Ophelia went to work as usual. However, when Jane entered the office building, everyone eyed them strangely. Jane, why do I feel like everyone's looking at me weird? Ophelia whispered. Jane smiled. So? Yes. Ophelia felt uncomfortable. Jane immediately handed Ophelia a folder. All right, just don't think too much about it. Documents urgent. Take a look. We'll continue our discussion later. Upon receiving the folder, Ophelia immediately sat down and started reading. When Jane saw her lower her head, she immediately made an okay gesture towards Nick's office. Nick nodded and called John. When John received the call, he immediately got down to work. He instructed a staff member, Hurry up! Get the flowers! On the other side... Xavier had changed into a black suit and was combing his hair in the mirror. Aiden was standing behind him. Why do I feel like you're a little bit nervous? Xavier nodded up his tie. He was a little nervous. This was the first time he'd be making such a grand gesture. He couldn't relax. Aiden laughed. <laughs> there really a need for this? You don't understand, Xavier exclaimed. Of course Aiden wouldn't get it. He was single. He'd never been committed in his life. Looking at the time, Xavier said... Let's leave now. All right. Aiden immediately went to start the car while Xavier tidied up his clothes in the mirror. When the car stopped, John was already waiting in the lobby on the first floor with a bouquet of flowers. Seeing that Xavier was wearing a very formal black suit today, John couldn't help but give him thumbs up. You look incredible. Ophelia's going to be bowled over. Xavier took the bouquet from John's hand and saw three blue orchids standing out amongst the red roses. The rest of the flowers and bouquets are being used to decorate the room upstairs, just as you requested. Perfect. Xavier nodded. John looked at the time. All right, go up and prepare yourself. Jane took Ophelia along with her, and they probably won't be back for a while. You got a couple of minutes. Xavier walked up to the elevator with the bouquet in his arms. When he walked to the entrance of the office, he saw that Nick was busy ordering the staff around to get the room ready. When Nick saw Xavier come in, he saw him dressed so formally and nodded in satisfaction. You're here. You look good, my friend. Nick smiled widely. Xavier nodded, then indicated to the rest of the staff decorating the room. Make sure they all get a hefty bonus. Nick snapped his fingers. Mr. Woods has decided to give you all a 50% bonus this month. Thank you. The rest of the staff was excited at the news and started working even harder. Jane called Nick. They would be back soon. Nick yelled, They're coming back! Oh, the employees yelled back. Jane held Ophelia's hand and a bag of drinks she had just bought from the supermarket in the other one. We have to hurry, she said urgently. Ophelia was also carrying a bag. This is really heavy. Just slow down a bit. An hour ago, Jane suddenly said that she would treat everyone to drinks, so she dragged her friend to a nearby supermarket to buy some. Usually, buying drinks is a straightforward task. But for some reason, Jane took her time and pondered over which bottle should be bought. After buying several of them, Jane suggested walking back. This was pure torture for Ophelia. Jane, let's just take a taxi, Ophelia pleaded. Her main concern was she wouldn't be able to finish today's work if they took so long to get back. Jane was trying to stall for time. She wanted to give Nick and the others more time to prepare. We'll take a detour and get back in time to... Don't worry, Jane assured her. By the time they arrived downstairs, Ophelia was exhausted. Jane quickly took out a tissue to wipe away Ophelia's sweat and helped her tidy up. 
Jane noticed that even without the makeup, Ophelia looked breathtaking. She was ready for the surprise. Good. Beautiful. Jane smiled at her friend. Ophelia looked at her. Are you right? It's like, you know, really weird today. And? No, just forget that. Let's get back to work, Jane said with a smile. She carried the two bags of drinks. Ophelia wanted to reach out and lend a hand. Jane refused. I'll do it myself. Let me help you. Let's go. We're late. Hurry up. Jane urged her. Don't worry about this. I can do it. At this moment, they didn't notice that a sports car had stopped in front of the lobby. Damon Hoffman saw Ophelia and Jane enter. The moment Ophelia and Jane stepped into the elevator, he stepped into the lobby as well. Ophelia! Damon yelled. Ophelia and Jane turned around at the same time. When they saw Damon, the smiles on their faces disappeared. Ophelia frowned and wondered why Damon was here. Jane's heart skipped a beat. Everyone else was waiting for them on the top floor. What could she do now? Damon walked towards Ophelia and didn't stop until he was right in front of her. Can we talk? Ophelia was surprised to see Damon standing in front of her. Jane was nervous. What was Damon doing here? Why was he here? Damon looked at Ophelia with sincerity. Ophelia, let's talk, please. It won't take much time. Ophelia looked at Damon as if this was the first time she was seeing him like this. What do you want to say to me? She asked. Jane was concerned and apprehensive. If Ophelia went out to discuss things with Damon, wouldn't Mr. Wood's gesture of love upstairs become a joke? How could this be? Ophelia had to know and had to see what he had done for her today. We have work to do. Jane reached out to tug on Ophelia's clothes. Ophelia still did have work to do, and she really couldn't delay it for long. Let's set another time. I have some important work to take care of, she replied. Damon frowned. He wasn't happy about this. Is that important? Ophelia, are we complete strangers now? What do you mean? Ophelia asked. She could tell that Damon didn't want to just have a chat with her. He seemed to be prepared for something as well. Damon was the one who had always disliked her. Damon, what are you trying to say? Ophelia was confused. I won't hold you up for long. Just give me five minutes. We can talk here. Ophelia turned to Jane. Jane, you go up first. I'll talk to him and I'll be right with you, okay? But before Jane could finish her sentence, she was pushed into the elevator by Ophelia. The doors closed. Ophelia didn't want Jane to get involved in this mess. Seeing the elevator door close, Jane quickly called Nick. Jane, where are you guys? We're all waiting, Nick immediately said. Mr. Harris, something's happened, Jane said anxiously. Damon Hoffman is here. He demanded to talk to Ophelia in person. Where are you? Nick asked on the phone. Ophelia just pushed me into the elevator. I'm already here. Nick hung up the phone. He was hesitating about how to tell Xavier this. John saw Nick's expression and asked, What's the matter? Damon Hoffman is here, Nick answered. John was stunned. What should they do now? Hearing the sound of footsteps, the others had already begun their preparations to surprise Ophelia. John immediately made a stop sign, telling them not to move. Not long after, they saw Jane enter carrying two bags, but they didn't see Ophelia. Nick walked to Xavier's side and whispered a few words. Xavier raised his eyebrows when he heard this. Damon Hoffman really knew how to pick a time. Should we go down there and have a look? Nick asked. Xavier shook his head. No need. Since he had decided to gamble, he would let Ophelia decide. Jane ran towards Xavier while gasping for breath. Mr. Woods, I'm sorry. I couldn't get Ophelia here. That's okay, Xavier said. Let her talk and decide what she wants to do. As they waited, it felt like time had stopped. Nick and John both felt that Xavier was very calm. How could he remain that way when his wife's ex-husband had come knocking on his door? Was he just supposed to pretend nothing had happened? Actually, Xavier was clearly very worried. He just had a very good poker face. In front of the elevator, Damon and Ophelia stood there looking at each other, not speaking. Time passed slowly, but the two of them still didn't move. Damon looked at Ophelia, whom he hadn't seen for some time. This time he sized her up. She looked different. The girl in front of him was much prettier and more spirited than before. Her eyes flickered with a different light, and her fair skin had a hint of pink to it. Although she hadn't put on any makeup, she was still very eye-catching. Seemed like she wasn't so plain anymore. In fact, looking at her closely, 
Ophelia was very attractive and could probably give Emily competition. She had undergone a radical transformation. Seems like you're doing well. You look like you're having a good time. Damon finally opened his mouth. Ophelia lifted her eyes. You seem to be behaving better than last time. Are you proud now? Damon couldn't help but ask. What do you mean? Ophelia looked confused. Damon revealed a mocking smile. You found a rich man. Is it because he's the president of Sequoia that you decided to sell yourself out? His words disgusted Ophelia. Watch your mouth, Damon. Is that true? Damon asked. Don't tell me you still don't know his real identity. Ophelia wasn't interested in discussing such things with Damon. Time is up. I'm heading back up if that's all you had to say. Damon grunted. Ophelia, this man is not as simple as you think. He just wants to use you. Do you really want to jump into that fire? Ophelia turned around and looked at him calmly. That's my problem. Damon grimaced. It seemed that Ophelia really had changed. Are you in love with him? Are you willing to give up your life for him? Ophelia smiled sincerely, which broke Damon's heart. Her smile was gorgeous. If she had always been like this, why did he let her go? Was he blind? I'm in love. Ophelia declared it openly. I don't think there's a woman in the world who could refuse a man like Xavier. Damon gritted his teeth. Your love is really shallow. Ophelia continued to smile. To you, shallow. To me, it's beautiful. I want to work hard for myself. And I want to help him too. Damon, since you decided to end it, you should go look for someone else. Why don't you look over yourself? Ophelia pressed the button for the elevator. When Damon saw the elevator doors were about to close, he quickly grabbed onto the door to prevent it from shutting. Ophelia looked at him blankly. What was she trying to do? Damon, what else do you want to say? Your what's the man for you? Damon almost blurted out the secret he was hiding, but he stopped himself when the words reached his mouth. It was unclear if he wanted to hurt Ophelia with it or not. He remained quiet. Ophelia looked at Damon. Whether he's the right man for me or not, I'll only know after I try. You've only been divorced for a few months, and you're this eager to get in another man's bed. Damon was snarling. Ophelia did not like what he had said. That's my problem. Damon was full of anger. He was unable to say a word. Ophelia was not as submissive as she used to be, and she now had her own opinions and ideals that she stood up for. Ophelia looked at the time on her phone. I still have to work. Maybe we'll talk some other time. Or probably not. Damon's face fell. What if I want to remarry? Damon's words completely stunned Ophelia. What did you just say? Ophelia asked again to make sure she had heard him correctly. Damon looked at Ophelia seriously. I said, let's get married again. Ophelia really didn't expect him to propose to her. She still remembered Damon's indifference towards her at the time when he was trying to find a way to get a divorce. And now he wanted to remarry? This was ridiculous. Damon, are you right? Ophelia asked him. Did you hit your head somewhere? Damon shook his head. I'm perfectly fine and sure about this. You can take your time. Ophelia almost immediately burst out into a response. I don't want to get remarried. Why? Damon wanted to know the reason. Hadn't Ophelia once loved him? Ophelia answered. No reason. Marriage is me. something people do for fun. It's something that you can be over and done with like that. You want to leave and you left. Some marriage is a promise. You broke it. Damon looked at her listlessly. Ophelia continued. We are done. You said once that we were wrong and not meant to be together. And since it was wrong, we went our separate ways. This is the best outcome for everyone. Her words made Damon let go of her hand. The elevator doors slowly closed, and Ophelia saw the hurt in Damon's eyes. However, she felt calm and in control. Damon stood in front of the elevator with his head down and his hopes crushed. Having seen this happen... Aiden decided to leave too. Actually, he had been waiting in the foyer for Jane and Ophelia to return, 
so he could alert Xavier and the rest. He hadn't expected to see such a scene. Seeing Damon Hoffman's face, Aiden couldn't help but admire Ophelia's strength and integrity. In the end, she had stuck to her guns and not budged. Aiden returned to the upper floor as fast as he could and told Xavier what happened. Finally, a hint of a smile appeared on Xavier Wood's nerve-wrecked face. Ophelia went to the washroom to wash her face. Although Jane had helped her clean up before, she felt the need to wash up again. Looking at her face dripping with water in the mirror, Ophelia reached out to touch it. She seemed to appear different than before. Without much thought, she took out a paper towel and wiped the water off. She gave herself a pep talk and tried to cheer herself up. She walked back to her workspace. However, she was still a few steps away when she noticed the office had gone dark. Was the power out? Curious, she took a few steps forward. She found that the lights in the office weren't switched on. There wasn't even anyone at the front desk. Ophelia pushed open the door to her workspace and found it eerily quiet. Is anyone here? Ophelia called out. Where did everyone go? Why was there no one there? It seemed that even Jane was missing. Suddenly, she stopped. Ophelia seemed to have stepped on something. She turned on her cell phone light and saw that the floor was covered with rose petals, and it seemed to make a trail, as if creating a path for her. Using the light from her cell phone, Ophelia slowly followed the rose petals. Halfway through, the farthest lamp suddenly lit up. Ophelia seemed to be surprised. She glanced back and saw pink roses on each side of the office. Under the light of the lamp, the bouquets looked exquisite. Ophelia stopped. What's going on? Magic? Or was there some celebration? She was confused. What the hell is going on? Ophelia said into the darkness. Suddenly, a beam of light struck not far from where she was. It was as if something was lying on the ground. Ophelia walked over, full of curiosity. With every step she took, the lights around her turned on one by one. When Ophelia reached the spot where the beam shone the brightest, all the lights in the room were turned on. It was then that she finally saw everything. She was standing under a rose-decorated arch. She looked back and saw that where she had walked through was a passage with a path paved with rose petals. On either side of the path were neat rows of flowers, each with a pink balloon tied to it. The office had become a sea of flowers, and the scene was very reminiscent of a wedding scene in a movie. Ophelia smiled in amazement. The scene before her moved her. She had never imagined that such a thing would appear before her eyes, and she never imagined that such a thing would be done for her. All of a sudden, the people in the room burst into applause. Ophelia looked at them with moist eyes. What are you guys? Looking at everyone in front of her, Ophelia Hill was overjoyed. You go, girl! Everyone seemed to congratulate her. Ophelia blinked. She didn't understand what was going on. Jane pointed behind Ophelia and whispered, Behind you. Ophelia turned around and saw the tall figure standing at the other end of the rose path. Tears of joy flowed down her face as it hit her. Although they weren't far from each other, Ophelia could still feel Xavier's attentive gaze on her. When he saw her crying and smiling, he smiled too. He walked towards Ophelia with a bunch of roses in his arms. Tears streamed down Ophelia's face as she watched Xavier Woods walk towards her. He looked drop-dead gorgeous in the suit he was wearing. When he stopped in front of Ophelia, she laughed. Xavier reached out to wipe away the tears at the corner of Ophelia's eyes. His voice was magnetic. You look even more beautiful when you smile. What are you trying to do? Ophelia's voice was cracking. Xavier passed the flowers in his arms to Ophelia. Beater for you. Ophelia looked at the bouquet and also saw the three particularly eye-catching blue orchids. Her heart skipped a beat. Did Xavier was going to make this all public? Do you remember when I once asked you what a blue orchid represents? Xavier asked. Ophelia nodded. She replied adorably. I'd check it out. Xavier smiled. Do you need to look it up online? Yeah. Ophelia snapped for a moment. I know what it means. Xavier took out a small box from his pocket and looked at her affectionately. Ophelia Hill, no matter what happens, will you walk down the path of life with me? Ophelia saw Xavier open the small box, which had a pair of shiny rings nestled inside. Xavier took one of the rings out. 
He smiled. Ophelia, you caught my eye from the day that I met you. Every day since then has been magical. I always felt that I owed you a proposal, so I wanted to plan it out on a special day like today. Ophelia, will you make me the happiest man alive? Will you marry me for a second time? Ophelia's tears resumed when she heard the question. She had always dreamt of being proposed to romantically since she was young, but she had never expected it to be so dreamlike and beautiful. Ophelia was excited, but she didn't say a word. John shouted, Mate, this proposal requires you to kneel, otherwise it's not really a proposal. Seeing no reaction from Ophelia, Xavier took a step back and slowly went down on one knee. Ophelia rushed forward to stop him. You didn't have to do that. Aren't marriage proposals always like this? Xavier looked up at Ophelia and smiled. Ophelia shook her head. She didn't want Xavier to kneel down, and she didn't need to think twice before responding. Ophelia said loudly and clearly, Yes! Xavier got up again and asked, Are you sure? More sure than I've been of anything else, Ophelia exclaimed. They had been husband and wife for quite a while already. However, she didn't expect Xavier to propose to her so suddenly and in such a romantic manner. Hearing her answer, Xavier put the ring on Ophelia's eagerly awaiting finger with a smile. Ophelia looked down at the ring. It felt different this time. It felt better this time. Xavier took Ophelia's hand and kissed the ring on her finger. Ophelia felt the warmth of her fingers flow all the way to her heart. This man was amazing. Xavier looked at Ophelia gently. It's your turn now. Ophelia handed the large bouquet of roses to Jane. Then she picked up the other ring in the box and put it on Xavier's finger. Xavier revealed a bright smile. Thank you, my love. Ophelia looked at Xavier Woods. She suddenly got on her toes and put her arms around Xavier for a kiss. Xavier immediately put his arms around Ophelia's waist, and the kiss became more intense. The crowd burst into warm applause. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Woods! Amidst the well wishes, Xavier hugged Ophelia and kissed her affectionately. He wanted to be with this woman for the rest of his life. John whistled. Hum! After a while, Xavier let go of Ophelia and said, From now on... You're mine. Haven't I always been yours? Ophelia put her arm around Xavier. Thank you for giving me a new life. Everyone was busy cheering, so they didn't notice the lonely figure by the door. He clenched his fist and looked at the two who were locked in an embrace. He felt as if he'd been punched in the gut. It was painful, and he felt he would never recover from this. Forcing himself to close his eyes, Damon Hoffman turned around. The scene had not escaped the sharp-eyed Aiden's notice. There was nothing to be done. The applause and cheers from the audience seemed to have drowned out the sight of anyone unhappy or angry. Everyone's attention was on Xavier and Ophelia. After the marriage proposal was done with, Xavier personally handed everyone an envelope containing $1,000 cash to thank them for their help and good wishes. The two lovebirds then left the office to continue their Valentine's Day plans. In the car, Ophelia carefully examined the ring on her finger. It was a simple design, but it had its own craftsmanship. Ophelia stared at the exquisitely crafted O that was decorated with a lot of tiny diamonds. She reached out and took Xavier's hand. His ring was designed even more simply, except there was a different pattern than what Ophelia expected. Those are the letters H and W combined, he explained. H and W? Ophelia was confused. Why not X? Xavier smiled. H and W, for Hill and Woods. It stands for us. Ophelia once again looked at the two hands that were clasped together. The two rings seemed to merge into each other. They were really a match made in heaven. She finally understood. I am yours, and you are mine. Such a special design. Ophelia really liked it. Xavier reached out and pulled Ophelia into his arms. I wasn't prepared for anything when we got married. You don't mind, do you? Ophelia quickly shook her head. She didn't think too much about it back then, either. Where are we going? Xavier thought for a moment. To watch a movie. Ophelia seemed to be in disbelief. Did someone like Xavier Woods actually go to the cinema and watch movies? Are we really going to watch a movie? Ophelia asked. Xavier looked at her. You don't like movies? I mean, it's Valentine's Day. There's going to be a lot of people. After she finished speaking, she stared at Xavier. 
And everything that happened today is already enough for me to remember for the rest of my life. As expected, there were a lot of people when the two of them arrived at the cinema. What would you like to see? Xavier asked. Ophelia saw there were a lot of people around, and she felt uncomfortable with the crowd. Xavier, come There are a lot of people here. Xavier was also a bit put off by the scene. It was extremely noisy with so many people. Are you sure you want to go home? Ophelia nodded. Yeah, we can just go home and watch a movie. That'll probably be better. After dinner, the two went back to their home to watch a film. Xavier, thank you so much for giving me such a romantic and warm Valentine's Day today. Ophelia leaned on Xavier's shoulder. Xavier smiled. Me too. Thank you for making this special for me. Before they could finish watching the movie, Ophelia fell asleep on Xavier's shoulder. He held her in his arms, took the remote control, and turned off the TV. He helped Ophelia lie down on the bed, and then bent down and kissed her lightly on the forehead. Come on, my love. Xavier got up and walked out of the room. He trotted to the study and picked up the phone. Although the phone was on mute, Xavier noticed that someone had called a few times. Hey, Xavier answered. Xavier, it's me. Xavier heard Ella's voice. I've already been briefed by John. I'll go to the Hoffman's tomorrow for an interview. Great, Xavier said. This time, I will do everything in my power to finish the mission. Don't worry, she added. Xavier didn't say much and just hung up. His blue-gray eyes looked different in the night, and the real battle was about to begin. It was a new day. Ella had changed her clothes, picked up her bag, and prepared to go to the Hoffman Mansion for an interview. This time, she would definitely complete Xavier's mission. She knew that if Xavier had to establish himself in New York, the Hoffman group had to be taken care of. As soon as she reached the bottom of the stairs, John picked her up in his car. Quite the benefit for doing a mission. I don't think you'd ever be my chauffeur otherwise, Ella said with a smile. John glanced at her nonchalantly and did not answer. He knew that she was suitable for covert missions. She had both looks and ability. This arrangement they came up with was truly the best choice. There's some information in here. Take it and read it first. John handed her a folder and looked serious. Ella picked up the documents. Don't worry, I'll definitely finish the task. You have to do more and talk less. It would be best if you could successfully win Andrew Hoffman's assistant position. If not, there are other positions too. That one's a priority. John didn't flinch as he said, The final goal is to destroy the Hoffman group. Ella smiled confidently. This time, I am determined to win. John knew Ella had the ability to do so, but he didn't want her to get carried away. You have to be careful with everything. Andrew Hoffman, not easy to deal with. He's cunning, all right? We only have this one chance, so you have to be cautious. Got it. Ella nodded and read through the information John had given her. Car stop not far from the Hoffman Group HQ. This is where you get off. The rest is up to you. All right. Ella unfastened her seatbelt and got out. John said before driving off, If there's any news, immediately report it. Be careful. Ella nodded and pushed open the car door. She was dressed in a business suit and wore subtle makeup. As soon as Ella walked into the building, she attracted a lot of attention. Hello, I'm here to interview for the role of assistant to the general manager, Ella asked at the front desk. Could you please fill out the form here? The receptionist handed her a clipboard with the form. Ella took the form and walked to a small table to fill out the information. At this moment, there was commotion near the entrance. Ella raised her head and saw Emily Hill walking in with her head held high. She was wearing a light red dress. Emily walked directly across the front desk and entered the elevator with a haughty look. Ella also heard the other interviewees discussing and whispering amongst themselves. I think she has some special access. Yes, I heard her relationship with the vice president is very close. Isn't she pregnant? She dared to wear stilettos and even put on makeup. Haven't you heard? The baby doesn't have Hoffman blood. She had an abortion. While she was filling out the documents, Ella was carefully listening to the discussion between the two women who had also come here for an interview. The interview process began. Ella adjusted herself and decided to do her best. Andrew Hoffman's assistant requirement was very high. Ella had been through a lot of rigorous checks and written tests, and finally got the chance to meet Andrew in person. Andrew looked at Ella's information and asked a few questions. 
Miss Carter, did you just come back from Europe? Yes, I just got back two weeks ago, Ella replied. I've had a look at your information. All of your qualifications and skills are exemplary. Uh, why not just stay in Europe? Andrew asked. I still think it's more comfortable at home, Ella answered. Andrew nodded. Ella's resume was very good. It wouldn't be a problem for her to lead a team on her own in the future. Carter, don't you feel you're a little overqualified for this position? Ella smiled. How can I be overqualified? I need to learn to get better and gain some experience and understanding of the industry. Furthermore, it would be my honor to be a part of the Hoffman Group. Andrew was not convinced with Ella's answer. Miss Carter, why not Sequoia Turner? The company has been doing rather well lately and would be closer to your residence as well. Do you think I'm not fit to be your assistant? Ella's eyes darkened. Andrew shook his head. I'm just curious. Sequoia Turner is a small company right now, and their work is more or less very standard, Ella answered. We've always liked challenges, and I believe this would be challenging. Andrew couldn't find a fault with her answer. At this moment, Damon Hoffman pushed open the door and entered. Andrew! Andrew Hoffman frowned. Don't you see I'm conducting an interview? Damon apologized. Sorry! Get out! Andrew ordered Damon. Damon felt helpless and closed the door to leave. Ella could see the relationship between the two brothers was frosty. She could make use of this in the future. My apologies for the interruption, Miss Carter. Let us continue. That's all right, Mr. Hoffman. After that, Andrew asked some professional questions, and Ella had an answer for all of them. While Andrew was deciding about whether or not to offer a job to Ella, Emily Hill barged in. Mr. Hoffman, what do you mean by this? Emily blurted out. Andrew frowned. What happened to you? This is Hillcrest, and you can just walk in and out wherever you want. Sensing his anger, Emily went silent. Ella glanced at her and gave her a slight nod. Unfortunately, Emily didn't pay any attention to her and completely ignored the fact that Ella was present. Ella, who had a strong sense of self-esteem, felt insulted by this. She promised that she would make Emily pay for it. Miss Carter, please head back to the waiting room and wait for me, Andrew said to Ella. Ella stood up and nodded. She turned around and saw Emily's feet. Her lips curled up into a smile. Emily Hill frowned as she looked at Ella Carter, who was much taller than her. Mr. Hoffman, is this the assistant you've chosen? Andrew looked like he wanted to kick Emily out, but with Ella present, he didn't want to ruin his good graces. It's my business, Andrew said indifferently. So this is the person you want to replace me with. Emily scrutinized Ella carefully. She looks nice, but I'm not sure about her skills in bed. Ella frowned. Emily didn't know how to talk, especially not subtly. When Emily was about to step forward, Ella seized her opportunity. She stomped on Emily's foot and then pretended to fall forward. Emily cried out in pain. Ella used the advantage of her long legs to step on the door, just in case she fell down and injured herself for real. Emily, on the other hand, seemed to be in deep pain. The wound on her foot almost made her cry. However, from where Andrew saw it, Emily was the initial offender. What the hell are you doing? Andrew yelled at Emily. Emily opened her mouth and bit her lip. She had clearly wanted to teach this woman a lesson, but she was the one who ended up suffering. Andrew immediately stood up and walked over to Ella's side. Are you okay? It's just a bump. It's fine. Andrew glanced sideways at Emily, who was staring bullets at Ella. Miss Carter, come into work tomorrow. Ella couldn't help but smile inwardly when she heard Andrew's words. Seemed like this trick would work, but she still showed surprise on her face. What? Andrew repeated. You'll be working from tomorrow onwards as my assistant. You've already been accepted. Ella exclaimed. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. I will work hard. You can leave for the day. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Before Ella left, she glanced at Emily. Now she would get plenty of opportunities to deal with her. After leaving the office, Ella called Xavier directly, wanting to tell him that she had been accepted. However, Xavier didn't pick up her call, so she sent a message to John about the whole episode. John replied with a single text message saying, Okay. Ella looked back at the Hoffman family building as she was leaving. As long as it was something Xavier wanted, she would get it for him. Days later, construction work on the east side of the city officially began. Nick brought Ophelia and Jane to inspect the scene. The area was covered in dust, making it almost impossible to see their surroundings clearly. 
Nick talking to the person in charge of the construction site. Ophelia and Jane stood at the entrance to the location and looked upon the open space before them. Ophelia, what a weird feeling. From the design to the construction, I've been so excited. Well, yeah, it's like your baby, right? Ophelia asked with a smile. Jane nodded. Like her child, she had watched over the whole thing, step by step. Nick walked over and said, Jane, we need to confirm some aspects of the construction with the workers over there. Would you follow me? All right. Ophelia, you should go back. We might be gone for a while. Ophelia nodded. Okay. Before Ophelia reached the bus stop, a black car stopped beside Ophelia. She was on her guard and immediately took a few steps back. The window rolled down, and Ophelia's expression turned stony when she saw who it was sitting inside. Ophelia, get in. It was Elijah. She hadn't seen Elijah for a long time, at least not since she had left the family. She had no intention of getting caught up with Elijah or his family ever again. Perhaps he sensed this, because Elijah immediately softened his voice and said, Ophelia, I won't hold you up for long. There was a tone of sincerity in his voice. It also carried a hint of a request. So Ophelia nodded and got into Elijah's car. Car took off immediately. Elijah looked at Ophelia. From the looks of it, you seem to be having a good time. Ophelia nodded. It was true. Ever since she began ignoring the matters of the Hill family and the Hoffmans, she was more relaxed and had regained her lost appetite for things. Even Elijah could tell that with one look, Xavier was a good influence on Ophelia. He is good to you, isn't he? Ophelia was surprised to hear Elijah speak this way. Surely he felt angry at the way she and Xavier had left the other day, but no... He seemed to be genuinely asking her. Elijah smiled, sensing her shock. Ophelia, I'm being reasonable here. After all, it was Damon who did the wrong thing. It's okay, Grandpa. I'm fine now, Ophelia replied. Hearing Ophelia address him as Grandpa, Elijah smiled. That shouldn't be what you say anymore, right? Ophelia immediately understood what he meant. Yes, she and Damon were divorced, so she should probably not call him Grandpa anymore. I'm sorry, Mr. Hoffman. I'll take care of that in the future. Elijah shook his head. That's not what I meant. You should call me something else. Huh? Ophelia didn't understand. Elijah didn't respond. He knew that Xavier definitely didn't mention anything about the Hoffmans to Ophelia. So he decided not to dwell too much on Ophelia's form of address. Car stopped at a Chinese restaurant. Come have lunch with me, Elijah said. Ophelia sighed, but got out of the car and helped Elijah out. Since she was already there, she saw no harm in having lunch. So, she was hungry. Elijah booked a private booth for them. Ophelia felt sure he was up to something. And, sure enough, once the food was served and they had started eating, he asked her about Xavier. Where do you live now? Is it with Xavier? Ophelia nodded. Ophelia, you have to give him more time when you're able. Don't leave him alone said Elijah. When Ophelia heard this, she stopped eating. She stared at Elijah and finally asked, Mr. Hoffman, do you know Xavier? Elijah opened his mouth to answer, but stopped when he saw the ring on Ophelia's left hand. He suddenly looked quite excited. Ophelia, are you too? Ophelia hurriedly retracted her hand, a conflicted expression on her face. Elijah didn't push the matter because Ophelia looked uncomfortable. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I just wanted to know if you're doing well. You have the right to be happy. Ophelia took a moment to compose herself. Yes, we're married. Really? Elijah was even more excited. That's excellent news. Ophelia was happy to hear him say so, but she was inwardly skeptical. Elijah's reaction felt forced. Surely he wasn't happy with them getting married. Somehow it didn't feel right. Ophelia, I'm certain the two of you will understand and support each other. Ophelia frowned. Elijah's behavior didn't sit right with her. She decided to change the topic of marriage. Mr. Hoffman, do you know Xavier? Elijah suddenly realized he had said the wrong thing and shown too much excitement. How to explain it now? Elijah's silence confirmed one thing for Ophelia. He knew Xavier, somehow. But their relationship appeared to be complicated. Elijah sighed. He regretted his sudden joy. Xavier definitely didn't want Ophelia to know about this. I... Elijah began. 
I know his mother. Ophelia's eyes widened. There was a tense moment of silence as neither of them said a word. Ophelia was taken aback. Elisha knew Xavier's mother. Moreover, from the way he mentioned her, it seemed the relationship between the two wasn't just cordial. Ophelia, did Xavier tell you about his mother? Elijah finally asked. Ophelia also took control of her emotions, but she chose to ignore Elijah's query and decided to ask a question of her own. How do you know Xavier's mother? I'd known her for many years. Ophelia could see that Elijah had had a very deep relationship with Xavier's mother. Otherwise, the very mention of her wouldn't have disturbed him so. His mother has been dead for years. Did you know that? Elijah hesitated for a moment and then nodded. It was true. Not only that, but he hadn't been to visit her grave in a very long time. Ophelia could only assume there was something deeper and more intimate between Elijah and Xavier's mother. She had never seen him look so pained before, and she wasn't sure how to deal with the situation. So Ophelia made up her mind. If things were really like that, then she had to make sure that Xavier never met anyone from the Hoffman family. She would have to carry the weight of this decision. She was sure she didn't want Xavier to meet the Hoffman. When Nick and Jane returned to their office, they were surprised to find that Ophelia had not come back yet. They immediately called her, but her phone was turned off. Since they had no choice, they decided to tell Xavier about everything. Xavier immediately came to the office after receiving the news. He was surprisingly calm. The others didn't dare to say a word. Nick looked around at all of them and felt that he had a responsibility. Xavier, I'm responsible for this matter. It was true. He was guilty. He shouldn't have let Ophelia leave first. Xavier said nothing, but his hand in his pocket was tightly clenched into a fist. Perhaps he was unnecessarily worried. Take Ophelia away anyways. No one outside of this knew his relationship with Ophelia, apart from some essential people, so no one could use her to threaten him. The other possibility was that Ophelia had been taken away by someone she knew. But then, why didn't she pick up the phone or inform him? Either the phone was taken from her, or the battery had died. Or had she shut down her phone on her own? John now stood in front of Xavier and said carefully, Xavier, Richard asked me to pass a message on to Ophelia, but I never did. Xavier slowly raised his head. What did he say? He said he wanted to meet with her, John said in a low voice. Xavier frowned. Was it Richard who took Ophelia away? If that were the case then Ophelia might be in trouble. At this moment, Xavier's phone rang. Aiden, what happened? Weren't you supposed to be tailing Ophelia? She isn't picking up her phone. I was. She was picked up by a car as soon as she left the construction site, Aiden replied. I checked. The car belongs to Elijah. Hearing this, Xavier immediately retorted. Where are they now? Peking Duck House. Uh, it's down in Lexington. Xavier stood up. Pick me up immediately. Yes, sir. Nick and John let out a sigh of relief when they heard the news. They weren't ready to deal with Xavier's anger. When Xavier left, John sat down and took deep breaths to calm himself. God, these expressions are so scary. Nick felt the same way. If something really did happen to Ophelia, he wondered what Xavier might do. John continued. Nick, didn't you say that if Xavier lost control, we'd be screwed? Nick looked helpless. Doesn't matter right now. Only has eyes for his wife. Thank God. Xavier arrived in very little time at the Peking Duck House. You know which booth? Xavier asked Aiden. Aiden looked at Xavier. You really want to see him face to face? Xavier shot him a cold look that told Aiden he was not in the mood. Aiden looked away sheepishly. As soon as Xavier entered the restaurant, he saw Ophelia. She was confused, wondering why Xavier was there. Xavier? The two of them just stood there, neither of them saying a word. Xavier finally calmed himself. I'm here to pick you up. Ophelia let out a faint smile when she heard that. I must have made you worry. She could understand how he felt. While talking to Elijah, she realized her phone had been turned off for some time. When she switched it on again, Ophelia saw dozens of phone calls from Nick, Jane, and Xavier. So she hurriedly said goodbye to Elijah and left. She didn't expect to see Xavier here. Ophelia quickly took his hand. Let's go. 
Xavier held Ophelia's hand tightly. Don't do that again. I can't do the flex trick. All right. Ophelia nodded. There won't be a next time. Elijah watched their exchange without showing himself. He found it comforting to see them hand in hand. Since they had chosen to be together, he had decided to support them. It was the only thing he could do. After getting in the car, Ophelia said, I, uh, just met with Elijah Hoffman. Xavier's expression changed. Oh, and? Xavier, he, he knows your mother. What? Xavier looked back at Ophelia, a little nervous. What else did he say? He didn't say anything. He just asked me some questions about us. He was so happy to hear that we were married. <laughs> Made me a little confused, as you can imagine. Xavier hugged Ophelia. It's okay. We don't need to think about it. Ophelia leaned against Xavier's chest. It seemed like it wasn't a simple matter. There was something there. However, since Xavier didn't say anything, she didn't press further. Xavier continued, Ophelia, you have to avoid doing things like that as much as possible. You're my wife. You shouldn't have to deal with these people anymore. As for the other matters, you needn't worry about them either. Ophelia nodded. She understood that Xavier didn't want her to get involved in those things. After all, she had only recently divorced Damon to avoid complicating things like that. All right, I'll avoid them in the future. Xavier smiled. Suddenly, Ophelia said, Xavier, I'm, um, I'm hungry. Xavier looked at her astonished. But didn't you just eat now? Yes, but, um, I'm still hungry. And I wanted to eat with you. Xavier tapped the tip of her nose with his finger in an adoring way and said, Sure, let's get something delicious. A few days after her lunch with Elijah, Ophelia saw a familiar car outside her company offices. Ophelia stopped in front of the car as Emily stepped out. Emily began, Ophelia, you really are an obnoxious woman. I told you to come back home a few times. Just ignored him like he was nothing. Ophelia was shocked to see Emily. She seemed to have lost a lot of weight, and she looked paler than usual. Why are you looking at me like that? Something, Emily shouted. Ophelia shook her head. What's she supposed to say? Emily snorted. She added coolly, I came to tell you that Dad's birthday is in a few days, and she would like you to join the celebration. Emily narrowed her eyes as she waited for Ophelia's response. They hadn't seen each other in a while. Ophelia looked and dressed differently now. She looked healthy. Emily suddenly remembered something else. Oh, right. And bring that pretty boy with you as well. She just wanted to see how Ophelia and Xavier would make a fool of themselves. Even though he looks nice, I expect he's a pushover, added Emily. Ophelia frowned. Don't you say that about him. Emily laughed. Oh, does that hurt? Poor Ophelia. Pushover boy toy aside, you even work so hard to make money for him. And for what? I didn't expect you to be reduced to such a sad state. Ophelia grit her teeth, anger rising to the surface. Emily, are you finished saying what you wanted to say? Emily laughed again. One last thing. I never expected you to love such a pathetic guy. Ophelia finally lost control, stepped forward, and gave Emily a tight slap. Emily was in shock. She covered her face with her hand. Yeah, so he did pick me. Ophelia's hand hurt, but it felt good. That's what happens when you speak nonsense. What do you mean nonsense? Did you really fall in love with that pretty boy? It was rare for Ophelia to put up a brave front. Emily's words truly pissed her off. He's not like you make him out to be. Emily felt her own anger boiling up and raised her hand to slap Ophelia. But before she could do so, someone grabbed her hand. Emily whipped around to look at the newcomer, ready to curse. But when she saw who it was, her mouth fell wide open. Xavier pushed Emily away from him without hesitating even a little. Emily struggled to maintain her balance. What do you like? She shouted. Xavier said coolly. For people like you, I don't think there's any need for me to be polite. What? You? 
Emily couldn't finish her thought. Xavier's sudden appearance and good looks confused her. If it wasn't for that, she would have pursued the matter to the end. However, before she could finish, Xavier turned away, ignoring her. He lowered his head and asked Ophelia, Are you alright? Ophelia nodded. I'm fine. Xavier grabbed her hand. Let's go in. Ophelia nodded. As long as he was around, she didn't have to worry about anything. Emily suddenly realized he was Xavier. He was truly attractive. No wonder Ophelia wanted to protect him so much. She glared at them and said in a mocking voice, Ophelia, I expected you would be a looking man. Then Emily walked in front of Xavier. How much is it? Name a price. She won't be able to afford it, but I can. Xavier ignored her and pulled Ophelia around her and kept walking. However, Ophelia did turn around to look at Emily, her eyes uncomfortable. Emily used to look at Damon the same way. Ophelia subconsciously moved in closer to Xavier and held his arm. This time, she wouldn't let anyone snatch her husband away. Xavier noticed her actions. Something wrong? Ophelia didn't answer Xavier as she held his arm tightly. Xavier smiled as he saw through Ophelia's emotions. What's wrong? Do you not have confidence in me? No. Ophelia answered, her eyes cast down as the two of them got into the elevator. I have complete confidence in you. I have no confidence in myself. Xavier put his arm around Ophelia and pressed his forehead against her. But I have absolute confidence in you. But Ophelia began to speak. Her next words were drowned by yet another sudden kiss from Xavier. Ophelia kissed him back once she recovered from the shock. She didn't want this man to be given to anyone else. Richard's birthday was on a weekend. Ophelia had heard that Richard had arranged a party at the Zirconian International Hotel and also invited some partners who had good relations with him. When she woke up the morning of the party, Ophelia sat on the bed in a daze. Should she go to this birthday party or not? Honestly, in her heart, she had already rejected Richard. It was just that ever since Emily mentioned it, she felt she needed to go and take a look. What are you thinking about? Asked Xavier. Ophelia looked up at him. Xavier, do you want me to go? He walked to Ophelia's side and sat down. It's not up to me, is it, Ophelia? Do you want to go? Really? He smiled when he heard her answer. He knew she wanted to. After all, Richard was her father. Though he was heartless, she was still his daughter. I can accompany you, if you'd like. Ophelia found it hard to believe when she heard Xavier's words. Really? Of course. It's high time I met my father-in-law, Xavier said with a smile. Ophelia laid her head on his shoulder. Xavier, help me a lot. But I don't want you to be bothered. And honestly, once they find out who you are, bothering you is going to be their top priority. Xavier felt glad when he heard her. But truly, he only wanted her. He didn't care about the others at all. Ophelia, I really think we should go. If we don't confront them now, we'll regret it. Is that really what you think? Of course. Now, let's prepare for the party. We need to show these people what we're made of. Xavier took Ophelia to a famous clothing store. I heard the dresses here are all designed by famous designers from around the world, explained Ophelia. She had heard people mention it to her before. Standing in front of a row of gowns, Ophelia felt very out of place. She didn't know how to pick clothes. They weren't her forte. Are you wondering how to choose? Xavier asked in a low voice. Yes. Ophelia nodded and lowered her voice to a whisper. I have no experience in fashion. Xavier smiled. Then let me help you. Xavier held Ophelia's hand as they strolled in front of the rows of clothes racks. Do you have any special preferences? Um, nothing too sexy, Ophelia replied. Color? He asked. Nothing too bright. Xavier stopped his footsteps. I think you look more energetic in brighter colors. Are we really trying to steal the limelight tonight? Xavier replied with a smile. Of course. You're the CEO's wife. But choice is still yours. In the end, he chose a few simple dresses for Ophelia. 
Let's try these out, he said, as he led Ophelia to the changing room. After Ophelia finished changing, she walked out. Xavier had chosen a wine red dress for Ophelia to drag through the floor. He looked at Ophelia in front of him. The dress perfectly outlined her figure. But it was too long for her to walk comfortably, and it wasn't at all what she was used to. Turn around, said Xavier. Ophelia obediently turned around, exposing her beautiful back. Xavier frowned. He had been too focused on the front, and he had forgotten about the other side. Mm, too bad. Your back is too exposed, Xavier said. Ophelia immediately let out a sigh of relief. Next. Xavier didn't like the next one, or the one after that. Stresses later, he seemed ready to leave the store and go try another one. But in the end, Ophelia came out wearing a light blue dress. Only half of her shoulder was exposed, while the other shoulder had a butterfly knot designed on it. Her dress came up to her ankles, framing her figure nicely and completely. Ophelia walked in front of Xavier. How about this one? Xavier nodded. Yes, perfect. Ophelia heaved a sigh of relief. Finally, the dress was selected. She felt quite tired. Ophelia turned towards the dressing rooms to change into her own clothes, but Xavier held her back. Wear it. Really? Xavier nodded. We'll leave together from here. It's easier. Ophelia was led away from makeup and hairstyling. Xavier also chose a set of clothes to change into. He specially chose a dark indigo suit. Ophelia let the makeup artist play her part while she sat comfortably in her seat. She didn't care too much about things like makeup and hairstyling. Are you done? Xavier asked. Ophelia immediately opened her eyes when she heard Xavier's voice. He appeared astonished. Xavier couldn't believe his eyes. Ophelia looked more pretty with her makeup on. What's wrong? Ophelia asked. Do you, um, not like it? Xavier shook his head. No, you're beautiful. Ophelia looked away, feeling shy. Xavier came forward and held Ophelia's hand. Suddenly, I don't want other men to see you. Ophelia smiled sweetly. Xavier, you're also very handsome. Xavier smiled without saying a word. Ophelia said, if everything is ready, we can set off. She looked at Xavier holding a tie. Do you want me to tie it for you? Xavier answered. I originally wanted to tie it up, but now that I think about it, there's no need. It's easier this way. Looking at the bright-lipped Ophelia and her full, sparkling lips, Xavier was unable to control himself. He lowered his head and kissed her. This time, it was just a taste, and Xavier let go of Ophelia very quickly. Ophelia stared at Xavier with a smile, her eyes filled with love. Afterwards, Aiden drove Xavier and Ophelia to the Zirconian International Hotel. Ophelia knew that Xavier had some matters to take care of, so she didn't disturb him while he was busy on the phone. She looked out the window at the scenery as it went by. She felt her eyelids getting heavy as she waited. She closed her eyes. After Xavier was done, he found that Ophelia had fallen asleep on the side. She seemed to be getting tired easily these days. How long had it been since she fell asleep? Xavier held Ophelia in his arms and let her sleep more comfortably against his shoulder. He wanted to take Ophelia to the hospital for a checkup, just in case. If there was nothing, he would feel more at ease. Aiden stopped the car. Boss, we're here. Xavier gently woke Ophelia up. Ophelia, wake up. Ophelia opened her eyes and looked outside. Did we get there? Yes, Xavier replied. Ophelia patted her own face. You can fall asleep very easily these days, she said. You noticed it too? Xavier asked. I'll take you to the doctor sometime. Ophelia was a little embarrassed. No need. It's probably because of the increased workload. I haven't been able to relax at all. Why, I'm so tired. They exited the car. It was six o'clock in the morning. Ophelia held Xavier's hand as they went into the hotel. They saw Richard, Ruth, and Emily standing at the entrance to greet the guests. Looking at them like this, he felt like a complete family. No matter how she looked at herself, she felt like an outsider. She now wondered whether she should have come today at all. Sensing her thoughts, Xavier said fiercely, You have me. We're a family now. Richard looked at the handsome couple who had suddenly appeared in front of him. Just as he was about to speak, he realized it was Ophelia and Xavier. Ophelia? He was shocked. She looked so different. Emily was furious. 
Ophelia looked far more beautiful than her, and standing with her was Xavier. They looked so beautiful together. They might as well be like husband and wife. Mr. Hill, happy birthday. A bottle of wine for you, said Xavier as he handed an expensive bottle of red to Richard. He added, this is just a small token of my appreciation. Please accept it. Richard looked at Xavier and frowned. Xavier had dared to show up. He was also a little confused. Xavier looked like someone that Richard had seen before. Eventually, Richard said, Those without money shouldn't use fake goods to impress others, am I right? Some people might think it's shameless. When Ophelia heard this, she was shocked. She couldn't believe Richard had spoken like that to Xavier. She got even angrier. But just as she was about to say something, Andrew arrived with Ella and Damon. Damon was slightly shocked when he saw Xavier and Ophelia. He immediately smiled. So even William has come. What a rare treat. Andrew's words surprised everyone. Richard was stunned. He looked at Xavier again. He recalled what he'd said to him before. This spelled trouble for Richard. Ruth's heart tightened. The man who came with Ophelia had been in the media spotlight recently and seemed like he came from big money. After Emily recovered from her shock, jealousy and hatred shone in her eyes. Ophelia had managed to marry someone rich and handsome. Thinking back to what she said that day, she regretted her words. Ella's eyes narrowed as she looked at the woman holding Xavier's arm. She felt threatened. Wasn't this woman in charge of the East Side Sequoia Turner City? Why had Xavier come with her? Damon looked at Xavier and smiled condescendingly. William, I didn't expect you would come here today. Sure. Ophelia tensed up as well. He was doing it on purpose. He wanted to reveal Xavier's identity in front of everyone. Xavier was very calm and revealed a smile. I came with Ophelia today. Hearing Xavier's words, everyone's gaze fell on him. He glanced at Ophelia encouragingly. Ophelia said, I'm just here to drop off a present. I'll, um, leave immediately. These were not good people. She didn't want Xavier to stay here any longer. Since he knew Xavier's identity, Richard's expression changed, and he called out, William, please come in quickly. Ophelia's gaze fell on Richard, and she froze. What was her father doing here? Xavier looked at Ophelia and said with concern, Do you want to go in? Richard signaled to Ophelia with his eyes hoping she and Xavier would stay. Ophelia understood what he meant. Richard was only thinking of saving Hillcrest, so he would do anything possible. Right now, Xavier was undoubtedly his best choice. His professional relationship with Xavier would allow him to seize this opportunity. Ophelia ignored him. There's no need. I want to go back. Okay, since you've already given the gift, head back, Xavier said gently. Ophelia looked at him gratefully. No matter what happened, he was always on her side. She held Xavier's arm tightly, lowered her head, and didn't look at anyone else. Andrew continued, William, I am sure you can persuade her to stay for a little while longer. Otherwise, we'd think you were under her thumb. Xavier smiled. I don't mind if it's her. I'm quite happy. All the women were so jealous that their faces turned red when they heard that. What exactly does this Xavier mean? Emily tightened her grip, fingernails digging into her palm. Who would have thought that Ophelia, this pathetic woman, would land someone like Xavier? Who would have thought that a divorced woman would turn her life around like this? William, you have to be smart, Emily couldn't help but say. You must know the identity of this Ophelia. Some women are good at lying. Ophelia felt upset when she heard these insults. Emily's words made her uncomfortable. Xavier answered, but I've heard more about you and Damon. Emily was speechless and could only turn her head to the side. It was also Damon's first time seeing the power Xavier held. It seemed he treated Ophelia well. She, on the other hand, had become much more beautiful. His ego had never been this bruised. You seem to be very fond of her. Any plans? I mean... Xavier looked at Ophelia with a smile. I'll tell everyone if there's any good news. When everyone heard this, they were shocked. Xavier wanted to marry her. Ophelia. Ella frowned. Did Xavier like this woman? It's impossible. Since when had his standards dropped to this? Xavier noticed Ella's gaze, but he subconsciously avoided it. He hadn't once glanced at her since they'd been there. Ella suppressed the anger and doubt in her heart. She would find out about this matter. 
and she wouldn't let such a woman be with Xavier and destroy his reputation. Emily was so jealous that she was going crazy. To think such a man would want to marry Ophelia. It was disgusting. She had to go after Xavier. What right did she have to let Ophelia get everything? She walked up to Xavier slowly, inching up her skirt so he could see her legs. Ella's gaze turned ice cold. Emily was shameless, trying to rile up Xavier in front of everyone. However, Xavier didn't care about Emily at all. He knew what she was thinking. He put his arm around Ophelia and said, Go back. You're not feeling well. It's better if you get some rest. Ophelia understood what Xavier meant and sighed in relief. Yeah. Richard stepped forward. Oh, if you're not feeling well, you can go to the hotel to rest. I'll get someone to prepare a room for you right away. Ophelia was already used to seeing Richard's fake friendliness. No thanks, Dad. I'll go home. With Xavier. Xavier pulled Ophelia into his arms and used his other hand to cover her forehead, frowning slightly. It seemed to be a little hot. Her hands were warm, and he could see that she was visibly shaking. She's not feeling well, so I'll be taking her back now, Xavier said seriously. She raised her hand in protest to say that she was fine, but Xavier grabbed her by the waist and carried her away. Aiden quickly drove the car over. Xavier helped Ophelia into the car, and it sped away. Andrew always felt the reason Xavier brought Ophelia here today wasn't just for her to give them a present. He must have had some other work. But why didn't he leave? Could it be because she wasn't feeling well that he changed his mind? Andrew turned back to look at Richard, smiling. <laughs> Expect all of this to unfold here. Andrew turned to Ella and said, Ella, give Mr. Hill the present I got for him. Ella handed the gift over to Richard. We hope you like it. Happy birthday again, Mr. Hill. I hope you like the gift. I'll be leaving now. Andrew felt there was no need to stay any longer. Ella followed Andrew to the car, but she didn't ask a single question. Andrew started to chat with her. Don't you have anything you want to ask? Ella smiled. There are some things I'd be fine with not knowing. Andrew smiled devilishly and said, You're very smart, but I do think you should know something. Yeah? The man just now was the CEO of Sequoia, Williams. His real name is Xavier Woods, and the woman next to him is my brother's ex-wife, Andrew said. He paused. I don't know how they got together, but he seems to be good to her. Ella felt even more disgusted after hearing about Ophelia's identity. She kind of woman wasn't worthy of Xavier at all. How does she know, Mr. Hill? Ophelia is his eldest daughter. Unfortunately, he didn't treat her well, and she left home. I can't really understand why Richard used his youngest to drive Ophelia away. It's their fault Hillcrest is in the state it is today. Thank you, Andrew, Ella said as she got out of the car when he dropped her off. You're welcome, Andrew nodded. When Andrew left, Ella's face immediately turned dark. She had to do something about Xavier and Ophelia. They couldn't be together. Were they pretending? Or were they really together and in love? This was very important to Ella. She had waited for so many years. Someone like Ophelia couldn't swoop in and take Xavier away from her. Ella took out her cell phone and called Nick. Nick, what's going on with Xavier and Ophelia? Nick remained silent. You and John know everything, don't you? Ella, you should know there are some things we can't ask. Nick replied. Ella frowned. Of course she knew. If you don't have anything else to say, hang up. You're wasting my time. Nick, wait! <laughs> Ella interjected, but Nick had already hung up. This was the only chance she had to find out what had been going on. Ella held her phone tightly, her eyes filled with grim determination. This time, she would definitely let Xavier know. She would do anything and sacrifice herself for him. Xavier brought Ophelia back to the villa. Xavier, don't be nervous. I'm free. You have a fever, Xavier said, tucking her into bed. You need to rest first. I'll have Aiden call the doctor, he continued, patting her head. Seeing Xavier so nervous, Ophelia held his hand. I'll be fine after I sleep. Don't worry. Xavier sat beside the bed and held Ophelia's hand tightly. If you weren't feeling well, you should have told me earlier. 
Ophelia closed her eyes and smiled. I just got caught in a bit of rain yesterday. I'll take some medicine and I'll be fine soon. By the time Aiden arrived, Ophelia was already asleep. It's okay, Mr. Woods. Just a low fever. I suggest you take some medicine, the doctor said. Xavier was still worried. She's been sleeping a lot recently and um, getting tired very easily. When Liza heard that, her eyes flickered. What's been going on? Only for the last few days, she said that she's very tired very easily now, Xavier said, his eyes not leaving Ophelia's sleeping face. I suggest you bring her over to the hospital for an examination. Don't let her take this medicine either. What's wrong? Xavier asked worriedly. I'm not sure, but these signs could point towards a pregnancy. Xavier didn't react for a moment, and after a while, looked back at Ophelia. Was she really pregnant? Thank you. Xavier said after a while. His voice choked with emotion. After Aiden escorted the doctor away, Xavier squeezed Ophelia's hand. Right now, it was hard for him to describe his emotions. What will their children look like? Xavier wondered, stroking her hair tenderly. However, when he thought about his conflict with the Hoffmans, Xavier got worried. He didn't want Ophelia to be in the middle of such a stressful situation in the state. At this moment... Xavier started to get conflicted again. Could he protect Ophelia and their child? The next morning, Xavier took Ophelia to the hospital. After a nurse drew her blood, Ophelia asked Xavier, Did the doctor say something concerning? She had fallen asleep last night when the doctor arrived, so she had no idea what was going on. Xavier held Ophelia's hand. Don't worry, just routine tests. Really? Ophelia asked in a low voice. Xavier nodded. Really. The wait was torturous. Ophelia felt that Xavier was getting impatient. Could it really be there was something wrong with her? Just then, the doctor brought the test results to Xavier and Ophelia. Hello there, could you come with me please? Right this way. Xavier walked into her office, Ophelia's hand in his. The doctor saw the couple walk in with grave expressions on their faces. Please take a seat, the two of you, she said with a smile. Ophelia asked the doctor in a low voice. Doctor, is there something wrong? There's nothing wrong. It's just you've been very weak as of late. When Ophelia heard this, she relaxed. She was fine. Xavier's face visibly loosened, and he said, Is there really no other problem? No. It was probably just because her work was too stressful. Lack of sleep and rest. The doctor gave Xavier a look. Ophelia wasn't pregnant. Although he was a little disappointed, Xavier also felt relieved. At least there was nothing wrong with her. They can always have a baby in the future. Thank you, doctor. When Ophelia went to get her prescribed medications from the hospital pharmacy, the doctor spoke to Xavier. She is a little weak. It's possible she had anorexia for a while before she met you. Her body doesn't have enough nutrition, so she isn't in very good condition. Hearing the doctor's words, Xavier frowned. He remembered the first time he saw her. So weak and frail. Are there any other big problems? He asked. No, she's all right. She's not in danger, but take care of her. Keep her happy and ensure that she gets adequate nutrition and rest. Yeah. However, she has improved a lot. The doctor smiled. It has something to do with you. However, her body's resistance has also weakened because of her cold and fever. Once this is fixed, then you can try for a baby. Ophelia happened to hear the last sentence. She stood in the doorway and put her hand on her stomach. She wanted to be a mother. She wanted to have Xavier's child, and she was determined to recuperate so they could conceive. Xavier was giving Liza instructions about Ophelia's food schedule and nutrition. Sir, don't worry. I've remembered everything. Make more nutritious dishes in the future, Xavier continued to explain. We must focus on our health. Of course, sir. Xavier walked into the room and saw Ophelia going through her iPad very seriously. Why are you looking so serious? Ophelia nervously tried to put away the iPad, but Xavier grabbed it. Xavier's eyes softened when he saw what she had been reading. Are you looking at this? Ophelia reached out and took the iPad from him. It's normal. I just want to know more about it. <laughs> Xavier pulled Ophelia into his arms. We need to be okay first. We're not in a hurry. She really wanted to be a mom, and she felt like time was running out. Xavier smiled. I don't want you to take any risks, at least not right now. If he was going to lose Ophelia, 
I'd rather not have a baby. Ophelia shook her head. I really want to have a kid. Xavier gently held Ophelia by the shoulders and sat her down. We'll let this happen naturally, okay? Don't think too much about it. Okay. Ophelia sighed and leaned against his chest. Soon, she was back on track and healthy. However, her workload had been reduced. She knew that this was all Xavier, but it was tough for her. Every day, she watched the others bustling around. She just couldn't sit still. Nick, can you give me some work to do, please? I'm dying here. Nick looked at Ophelia and shook his head. Nope. Xavier instructed me not to assign you any work and to let you rest. I'll be a sloth by the end of the day. I think he wants you to stay at home more. He'd be more relieved than anyone else, Nick said with a smile. Ophelia helplessly walked out of Nick's office. When she turned to her seat, she was once again in a daze. After work, Xavier came to pick up Ophelia. I heard you ask Nick to assign you work. Ophelia nodded. I feel like I'm losing my mind, but that she told me to take care of my body. She didn't tell me to stop working. Xavier smiled. So are you blaming me for this? Ophelia quickly shook her head. No, no. Xavier pondered for a moment. Since you want something to do so badly, let Nick arrange it for you tomorrow. Ophelia jumped to her feet and put her arms around Xavier's neck. Thank you. With that, she kissed Xavier on the cheek. You're really good to me. Xavier reached out a hand to pinch Ophelia's nose. You're my wife. Of course I'm nice to you. Let's go home, Xavier said, ushering Ophelia into the car. Ella had been watching all of this unfold. Was Xavier this serious about this woman? She could tell that Xavier was very fond of Ophelia. She'd never seen him act like that with someone, with any woman. What kind of magic did Ophelia have to make Xavier treat her like this? Does this mean that Xavier has feelings for her? Ella tightened her grip on her bag. She wanted to kill Ophelia. Her head swimming in anger, Ella turned around to leave when she saw the car parked by the side of the road. The license plate was familiar. Damon's car. Ella stood on the spot and watched Xavier's car leave. She then saw Damon's car follow them. Looking at the scene, Ella smiled as something dawned on her. Maybe it meant that Damon hadn't given up on Ophelia. Maybe he wasn't as heartless as the rumors suggested. Maybe Emily used some tricks to get Damon to divorce Ophelia. She'd talked a lot about Ophelia to Damon. He believed it all. What an idiot. Now, after the divorce, Damon wanted to redeem himself. For the case, Emily wouldn't mind helping him. That way, she could get Xavier. He would be hers. Ella turned around and left. She wanted to go back and start working on separating the two of them. In the past few days, Damon would come to Sequoia whenever he had the time, but all he saw were Xavier and Ophelia leaving together. Then he would also silently follow them to their house before leaving. He couldn't understand why he was behaving like this. Was it because he saw Xavier proposing to Ophelia that day? Was it because he couldn't accept that Ophelia had found someone better than him? Was Xavier being genuine? Or was he just using Ophelia? Was he sincere? He shook off all these thoughts. Right now, he just wanted to follow them and see what was happening between the two. Today, Damon went to Sequoia again and looked at the time. Ophelia should be off work. After a few minutes, Damon saw her come out. Damon didn't see Xavier come pick her up today. Just as he was about to get out of the car, he saw a car stop in front of Ophelia. Damon froze. Even if Xavier hadn't come to pick her up himself, he'd sent a car for her. After seeing the car drive away, Damon got out. He wanted to get some fresh air. The car was too stuffy. But he knew why he really wanted to get out. The sight of Ophelia with Xavier was just depressing. Just as he lit up a cigarette, another familiar figure appeared in front of him. When Jane saw Damon, she was stunned. Why was he here? Damon held the cigarette in his hand as he looked at Jane. You're leaving work? Jane nodded, waiting to ask why he was here. However, when the words reached her mouth, she was unable to say them out loud. Jane, I, uh, I owe you money. I came to give it back to you. Damon suddenly blurted out. 
Jane clearly knew that Damon didn't come for the money, but she didn't say anything. All right, cool. Damon took out his wallet and handed her a wad of cash. Thank you for last time. You're welcome. It was nice seeing you. I'll be leaving now. Damon looked at the cigarette in his hand. Aren't you even going to count it? Jane shook her head. I trust you to return the exact amount. Damon threw his unlit cigarette onto the ground. I'll drop you off at home. Come on. Jane wanted to refuse, but she didn't want to get into a tug of war right now. She nodded her head. In the car, after a brief silence, Damon spoke up. Ophelia and Xavier look pretty good together. Jane burst into laughter when she heard this. Damon, they really admire you for holding back until just now. Yes, they do. Damon frowned. When are they going to get married? M Mary? Jane didn't understand what he meant by that. Why was Damon suddenly so curious about these things? Xavier and Ophelia got married a long time ago, within an hour of Damon and Ophelia's divorce. However, Jane did not tell Damon the truth. Didn't he propose to her that day? Jane looked at him. How did he know about Xavier proposing marriage? You saw it that day? Damon didn't answer. Jane understood that he was silently admitting it. I don't know about their private matters. And even if you did, you wouldn't tell me. Damon was well aware of this. Jane didn't respond. Damon continued. I heard that Xavier helped you with your divorce. Jane nodded quietly. You must quite like him now. Jane smiled. Well, I do. He's a good boss and a decent human being. Jane's words kept echoing in Damon's mind. When he returned home, he found that the atmosphere was tense. Seeing Damon come back, Helen stared at him. How can you just strut into the house like this after everything that's happened? What's, what's wrong? Damon didn't understand. Madeline gave Damon a look, telling him not to ask any further questions. Helen looked at Damon. Why did you reject your brother's proposal today? Mom, that plan of yours isn't good. We don't know much about that company either. If we were to make a move, it'd just be rash, Damon explained. Helen knew that his grandfather would not let Damon go back to work so easily. Mom, it's good for Ophelia, Madeline chimed in. Sometimes Andrew is in such a rush when it comes to doing things. Helen looked at her daughter and said, What do you know? Madeline shut up. In her mother's eyes, she and Damon were just the same. Damon looked at Helen. Mom, I'm doing this for Andrew. Shouldn't we investigate the other party's situation thoroughly so we can act safely? Right now, just by listening to a few people, it's easy to act rashly. Plus, Gramps is definitely not going to agree. Damon, I... Just then, Elijah interrupted. I think Damon is right. Dad. Helen turned around and glanced at him. I'm just... I've already sent people to check that company. They've been running short on capital for a year, and now they're anxious to find a buyer so they can get away. Helen didn't say a word after hearing this. However, she felt very uncomfortable. The old man was helping this outsider. Damon, come here for a bit. Damon followed Elijah into the study. What's the matter, Gramps? Elijah picked up the documents on the table and handed them to Damon. This document will be signed by you, and then you can keep it. Damon saw that it was a letter of transfer. Grandfather, this is... Keep it. I don't want to hear anything else. Elijah sat down, a pained expression on his face. Damon didn't understand why his grandpa wanted to give him this 10% share. And why now, all of a sudden? After me, you have to keep this family and business together. Damon didn't understand the meaning behind those words. Elijah saw the puzzled look on Damon's face and said, Sign quickly. Only you and I can know about it. Damon nodded and signed the papers. You're a good kid. He believed that Damon would do this. When Damon left Elijah's study room, Helen saw him coming out with a document. Her heart was hammering as she watched him carry it back to his room. Later, Helen told this to Robert and Andrew. Both father and son were infuriated. What exactly did Damon take away? I didn't see it, but I saw Damon was very cautious. I think it's definitely not an ordinary document. 
Andrew squinted his eyes. Could the old man have given some share to Damon? Right now, it's obvious he wants to side with him. They're sidelining me. Don't speak nonsense. Helen interrupted him. You are the eldest, and no one can change that. Robert also felt the tide had turned in Damon's favor recently. He had to make a move soon. Otherwise, he would be left with nothing. First of all, he had to get the will from the old man. The rest, he could deal with the lady. Dad, Xavier is also a threat. Andrew interrupted his chain of thoughts. Robert nodded. As long as he doesn't come back to this family asking for his share, everything will be fine. Are you sure he won't come back? Helen retorted. Although Xavier hasn't made a move recently, ever since he announced his identity as Sequoia's CEO, I feel he already has taken action. Robert felt that Helen was being overly cautious. Usually, she was the one with a calm head. This was definitely not a good thing. At the Riverside Villa, Xavier sat in front of his computer and watched as John drafted the proposal to buy the Hoffman Corporation. There had been no news from Ella's side for the past few days, so John could not come up with a detailed plan. Mr. Woods, you have a visitor, Liza said, standing in the doorway of the study. Xavier closed his laptop. Who's here? He said he was Ophelia's father. Xavier narrowed his eyes. Let him wait in the living room. I'll be right down. All right. Richard sat in the living room and waited for Xavier. He carefully looked at the furnishings in the living room. Not as luxurious as he had imagined. It was low-key yet unusual. Liza poured a cup of tea for Richard. Please have some tea. Thank you. Richard was a bit nervous. He was about to talk to the CEO of Sequoia. He had tried to understand everything about this person in detail over the past few days, but unfortunately he was still an enigmatic person. Xavier came down from upstairs. When he saw Richard's face, he understood he must have also come with a purpose. He narrowed his eyes. If it wasn't for the fact that he was Ophelia's father, he definitely wouldn't have met him. Mr. Hill? Richard immediately stood up. William, I'm sorry to disturb you. Please sit. Richard didn't dare to sit down first, and instead gestured for Xavier to sit down. Please. Xavier sat opposite Richard. Liza brought him a cup of coffee. Richard sat down immediately after, a hint of awkwardness visible on his face. Richard, you must have something to talk to me about today. Richard obviously didn't have enough energy to face Xavier. Is Ophelia better now? She's fine, Xavier answered. I will definitely take good care of her. Then, as an afterthought, he added, Definitely better than you did. That's good, Richard said, bristling at his words. Xavier really cut through with that statement. Xavier picked up his coffee and took a sip. He was waiting for Richard to speak first. Richard felt the sweat beads forming on his forehead. This person was very intimidating, he thought, more than anyone he'd ever met. Richard occasionally reached out to wipe the sweat off his forehead, but he didn't know where to start as he held back his words. Xavier was silent, letting the awkwardness do. Richard prepared to go straight to the point when suddenly Xavier said, Richard, you look very hot. Do you need me to turn on the air conditioner? N no need. No need. Richard quickly waved his hand. There really isn't any need for trouble. However, Xavier didn't listen to him. He turned on the air conditioner, which embarrassed Richard even more. He forgot what he had to say. The wind from the air conditioner blew over, quickly drying Richard's sweat. Richard felt goosebumps all over his body as he stole a glance at Xavier. William, actually, I came to visit you today for a reason. Hmm, what is it? That day, you and Ophelia didn't say much. You, you left immediately after giving me the gift. I felt bad about it. It's nothing, Xavier answered. I wasn't going to let Ophelia go that day because she was sick. She insisted on going. After all, you are her father. Xavier's words were a knife to Richard's heart. Yes, he was Ophelia's father, but all these years, what had he done to her? Did he deserve to be called her dad after that? Xavier saw a trace of guilt in Richard's eyes. It seemed his conscience was still hovering over realization. Ophelia didn't do anything to let you down, Xavier continued. 
But she... Richard wanted to speak of Ophelia's recent heartlessness. But when he saw Xavier's eyes boring into him, he couldn't say a single word. Xavier understood what Richard was going to say. You felt that Ophelia was being ruthless. Richard lowered his head. Do you think about the reason why Ophelia didn't hand over that 40% share? Richard was stunned. He didn't dare to look Xavier in the eye. 40% stake was Margaret's. She left it to Ophelia as legacy. I think she was forced to do so, Xavier continued, because someone wanted her dead. Richard was shocked. What did you say? It seems like you never suspected anything strange about your wife's death. Died of shock? Nothing suspicious about that? From what I know, she created Hillcrest with you. She was strong-willed. Would a strong-willed woman really die of shock? Richard's face turned pale. Xavier said this confidently. Way too confidently. What exactly do you know? Xavier smiled. Neither of them spoke as they just sat there. The coffee in front of Xavier had cooled down. He didn't want to drink it anymore. Richard broke the tension by saying, William, I'll leave now. Thank you for meeting with me. Xavier looked at Richard indifferently. All right. Sorry for the trouble. I hope you won't disturb Ophelia again. She doesn't owe you anything. Xavier added an edge to his voice threatening to spill into a fight. Ophelia is my daughter. She also has a share in Hillcrest. Xavier shook his head. Hillcrest has nothing to do with her anymore. From the moment you drove her out, that was the end of her relationship. Right now, Hillcrest is your responsibility. William, I take care. After Richard left, Xavier turned around and said to Aiden, Find someone to keep an eye on him. I'm on it. Xavier didn't believe Richard's words. He understood what he meant, but it was also possible that he would go back and listen to what Ruth and her daughter had to say and change his mind. When Emily saw Richard get out, she immediately leaped out of the car. Dad, how was it? Did you agree to help us? Richard said softly. Let's go back first. Emily's face fell, so her dad had not discussed anything. Or better, he hadn't been able to discuss it. She tightened her grip on her own hand. This must be Ophelia's intention. We will discuss this when we get home. Richard spoke up again. It hadn't been easy for Emily to get here. If she went back like this, she wouldn't be able to face herself. She had to see that man no matter what. Emily turned around and walked in quickly. William, why don't you agree? Father has already told you to do so. After Emily finished speaking... She realized there was no trace of Xavier in the living room. Only Liza tidying the table. Who are you? You just barge in like this. Emily sized up Liza. Tell him to come out. I have something to tell him. Upon hearing Emily's words and hearing her tone, Liza immediately frowned. He is not free. Please leave. She didn't like this woman. Emily stumbled on high heels, her eyes looking reproachfully at Liza. You are just a servant. You should tell me what I have to do. Liza put down the cloth in her hand, stepped forward, and twisted Emily's arm behind her back. How about now? <laughs> Emily was in such pain that she wanted to cry. Liza let go of Emily. Get out of here immediately, and do not ever come back. Just you wait, Emily pointed at Liza. Liza was about to move, but Emily held her injured arm and ran out. How do you do it? Maybe you should be Mr. Wood's bodyguard, Aiden Keith. Liza glanced at Aiden and smiled. He shrugged. She guess this woman is head over heels for Mr. Woods. Now she's thinking of a way to get close to him. Liza snorted, picked up two glasses, and walked into the kitchen. Aiden felt relieved that Liza was here to handle this. He'd always been a little awkward with women, and arm-twisting a woman would have been... well. In the evening, Liza saw Ophelia come in with a bunch of documents. She quickly went to pick them up. My God, what is that huge stack of documents? I need to work, Ophelia said with a smile. Where's Xavier? In the study room. Ophelia put down her bag and said, Then I'll go upstairs. Liza smiled. Ophelia was full of energy and looked much better. Xavier! Ophelia carried the documents to the study. 
Xavier looked up and saw Ophelia carrying the documents. Why did you bring your work back? Ophelia smiled. These are all papers I need your advice on. Put it down first. We'll talk about it after dinner. All right. Ophelia had to refile the past few plans and cases, as a result of which she discovered that a few of these had been planned by Xavier himself. Xavier, tell me about your work. Ophelia looked at Xavier, who was lying beside him, and smiled. You trying to understand my past? Ophelia blinked. Can't I? Leslie, I don't know anything about you. You owe me this much, at least. Xavier reached out and took Ophelia into his arms. What do you want to know? Everything. You're my husband. As your wife, shouldn't I know more about you? Xavier hesitated. There were some things he didn't want Ophelia to know right now. He didn't say anything, but asked a question. Ophelia, if someone wanted to split us up in the future, what would you do? Ophelia raised her head and looked at Xavier seriously. What would you do? I asked you first. Ophelia shook her head. Xavier, I'm married to you. I love you. I want to be with you forever. Ophelia's answer made Xavier's heart skip a beat. You really won't leave? Xavier lowered her gaze, her voice becoming softer. I'm not Unless you don't want me anymore. Xavier's heart thumped. If she left, what would he do? Xavier, if that day ever comes, I want you to tell me yourself. Ophelia lowered her head, not daring to look at him. Xavier reached out his hands to hold Ophelia's face up. He lowered his head and kissed Ophelia. He wanted to tell her how much he needed her now. And in the future, it was a new day. The sunlight shone through the curtains. Ophelia flipped over in her bed. It was warm everywhere. Ophelia opened her eyes and rubbed them. She reached for the phone, but there was nothing on the bedside table. She remembered that she had left her bag in the living room when she came back yesterday. Ophelia sat up and looked at the clothes beside the bed. Complete mess. She had thrown everything on the floor. Her face flushed and she held her face in both hands. She saw her pajamas were lying outside the door. What do I do now? Ophelia hesitated, wondering if she should go and pick them up. But she's completely naked right now. Why did someone open the door? She was conflicted. Ophelia tried her best to take a deep breath. Forget it. She thought and ran as fast as she could to pick up her pajamas. Just as she bent down to pick them up, the door handle opened. Ophelia's heart immediately rose to her throat. She grabbed her pajamas and blocked the way. She glanced at the wardrobe next to her. Just as Ophelia took a step towards the wardrobe, Xavier's voice came from behind the door. Is everything okay? He asked as he opened the door and stepped in. Ophelia let out a sigh of relief when she heard Xavier's voice. Her back was against the wardrobe, and she stood in front of him with her pajamas in her hands. She nervously opened her mouth. I... Hearing the sound of footsteps behind him, Xavier instantly closed the door. Sir, would you like breakfast? Liza asked from outside. Get ready, Xavier whispered. Ophelia was too anxious to do anything. Xavier, however, found the situation quite funny. He went to her and pulled her into his arms. Are you really still that shy? This is different. Ophelia stuttered. Xavier hugged her tightly. I remember you were very enthusiastic last night. Ophelia remembered too, of course, how they had come all the way from the study to the master bedroom. She never would have done this before. Was it because of Xavier that she was unable to suppress the urges of her body? Then Xavier whispered in Ophelia's ear, I really like your enthusiasm. Ophelia froze in Xavier's arms, listening to his seductive voice. He really shouldn't tease her so early in the morning. He let go of Ophelia. Hurry and wash up, otherwise you'll be late for work. When Ophelia appeared in the dining room after her bath, she was in good spirits. Good morning, Liza. Good morning, Miss Woods, Liza replied. Sit down and eat breakfast. Ophelia nodded with a smile. Yeah. Liza, one of these days, I thought to cook my own breakfast. Liza shook her head. Madam, I came to the house to look after you and Mr. Woods. You don't have to cook breakfast or anything, ever. Ophelia smiled sweetly. Xavier entered the dining room, wearing brand new clothes. Xavier, are you going out today?
Ophelia asked. Xavier nodded. I have to discuss a partnership deal with Nick. I'm going out of town. Ophelia put down her fork. How many days will you be gone? I'll be back tonight, Xavier answered. But not too early. All right. You take care of yourself. Don't worry. After breakfast, Ophelia got ready to leave for work. Xavier left with her. Before they left, Xavier left instructions for Liza. Liza, prepare dinner for Ophelia a little earlier tonight. Yes, Mr. Woods. Rest assured it will be taken care of. When Ophelia returned to the office, she went to find Jane. Is there anything I can help you with? Ophelia sat down beside her friend. Jane took off her glasses. Don't you have other plans today? No, Nick isn't here. He went on a business trip with Xavier, Ophelia answered, sighing. Just get something to do or I'll get really bored by the time I get off work. Jane laughed. Xavier did it for your own good. Don't get too absorbed with work. Jane. All right, all right. Jane passed a few designs to Ophelia. Help me code these documents, then scan them. I have to show them to Nick later. Ophelia immediately nodded. Okay, I'll do it right away. At lunchtime, an unexpected guest arrived in the office. Ella walked into the office in high heels. She was on vacation today, so she had come to take a look at things in Xavier's company. She also wanted to try her luck and see if she could run into Xavier. But when she checked, she found that Xavier and Nick had gone out to work. She cursed lightly and looked around for an excuse to stay, and saw Ophelia. Ella had been so busy these past few days that she'd forgotten about Ophelia, and since both Nick and Xavier were not here today, she had to take this opportunity for what it was. Ella walked to Ophelia's side. Ophelia? Ophelia raised her head to look at Ella. She looked familiar to her. You are... She began. I'm Ella. Do you have time? I want to talk to you. Ophelia put down the pencil in her hand, looking a bit surprised. With me? Yes. Ophelia felt there was a hint of hostility in her eyes. All right, Ella, um, what would you like to talk to me about? William, of course. Is that okay? Ophelia stood up. She wasn't as tall as Ella, so she had to raise her head slightly. Ella pouted. It seems that William didn't tell you about me. And what is he supposed to tell me about you? I'm William's fiancé, Ella said quietly. It was a lie, of course. But the men who knew the truth weren't there, so she was right as far as Ophelia was concerned. Ophelia was stunned for a moment. Xavier had a fiancé? That was impossible. He had told her before he had no other woman in his life, and this one was claiming to be his fiancé. Ella's voice was not low. The people around them could hear her. Ella stared at Ophelia and said, Ophelia, are you trying to seduce my fiancé behind my back? Suddenly, there was silence all around them. Everyone was waiting for Ophelia's answer, of course. They knew Ophelia was Xavier's wife. This woman who suddenly popped out of nowhere, claiming to be his fiancé. Jane was a little worried. She reached out to Ophelia, but Ophelia did not reply to Ella, nor did she show any expression on her face. Seeing Ophelia didn't move, Ella frowned slightly. Why wasn't she reacting? Was she scared? Was she stupid? Ella gripped her bag tightly, suddenly unsure. The hardest things to deal with were people who always maintained their silence. You never knew what they were thinking. Ophelia, speak out to me, Ella said. I was personally picked by Grandfather North. It was also he who asked me to come this time. Ophelia picked up her bag and sternly said, Come, let's talk outside. There were some things that Ophelia didn't want others to know. They were Xavier's private matters. All right, said Ophelia, the corners of her mouth curling. It was also in her best interest to leave this place before doing anything. Jane was worried about Ophelia. Ophelia, don't go out. Don't worry, Ophelia answered. Ella is a smart woman. She won't do anything stupid outside. Ella was a little shocked. She didn't think Ophelia was so perceptive. Ella, let's go. Jane watched Ophelia and Ella leave, still worried. The other employees gathered around her desk. Jane, will Ophelia be all right? That Ella woman seems like a ruthless person. Jane nodded as she picked up her cell phone and called John, since Xavier and Nick weren't here. What is it? 
John asked. Jane told John what had happened and waited for his reply. How long ago did the two of them leave? Been a while. I understand. John hung up without a word. Jane wondered whether to call Xavier, but with Ella, it was best not to take chances. She was about to call Xavier when Nick called. Jane? He began. You guys can work without worry. We'll take care of the matter. Ophelia will be fine. All right, Jane said. She felt relieved after hearing Nick's words. Truth was, the moment Ophelia went downstairs with Ella, Nathan, who was guarding her, had already told Xavier about this matter. Ophelia and Ella were sitting in a nice coffee shop near the company. Ella ordered the most expensive cup of coffee in the shop, while Ophelia only ordered a glass of juice. Ella spoke first. William likes coffee. Ophelia tightened her grip on her cup. Xavier did drink a lot of coffee. Ella had no plans to let Ophelia off the hook. We used to go out together and take a nice, quiet coffee shop. Sometimes we used to do that multiple times a day, she said, her eyes gleaming. Ophelia looked at the juice in front of her. She didn't think too much about it, nor did she care about what Ella had said. When Ella saw that Ophelia was still silent, she wondered whether Ophelia had missed a step. She continued, A man as good as William will surely have many women throwing themselves at him, or even shamelessly throwing themselves into his arms. I can understand all this, because I believe he'll be loyal when he's married. Why I turn a blind eye to those women? When she heard this, Ophelia smiled faintly. Ella's words were true. Xavier was truly loyal to Ophelia now that he was married. She had always believed this. Ella was taken aback by Ophelia's smile, which was extremely dazzling. Ophelia, why are you smiling? Because I think you're right, Ophelia answered. He is indeed such a person. She picked up her cup and sipped a little bit of juice. Tastes good. It was worth the price. Ella tried again. Ophelia, William and I will be married soon. She had not expected Ophelia to be so quiet. It was like Ophelia didn't care about anything at all, nor did she get angry with anyone. Ophelia raised her eyebrow and looked nonchalantly at Ella. And then? she asked. And then? Well, of course, we'll live together, Ella answered. Grandpa Norris had already said that after the matter in New York is over, we would get married. That's a fact. You and William are done. Yes, Ophelia nodded after she finished listening. I understand what you mean, Ella. Looks like you're not stupid, Ella said with a smile. It's obvious you're with William for nothing other than money. As long as you leave him immediately, I can give you some money. Ella, with how you treated women related to him in the past, Ophelia asked quietly. Ella said nothing. Xavier never had a woman, so she never had to deal with them. Surprisingly, Ophelia was the first woman she had ever fought with for Xavier. Ophelia circled her finger around the rim of the cup. Ella, can money really solve this problem? Ella snapped. Of course. Money is the most effective way to deal with a woman like you. What if I don't like the money? Ophelia asked. Ella was thoroughly infuriated. Ophelia was not acting according to plan. She was arguing with Ella. Ophelia, you gave the Hoffman family's position away for some reason. Clearly, the decision involved money, because the whole affair involved money. And now William is the president of Sequoia. Your moves always involve money, don't they? That's why you're with him. Ophelia thought about it for a moment. In the eyes of the outside world, this was indeed the case. Was this also the reason why Xavier never revealed his true identity to the public? Did he do it to protect Ophelia? The thought made her very happy. Ella continued, You and William cannot be together. Grandpa will not agree to this. At this point, Ophelia knew she couldn't stand against Norris on her own, but she would never give up on Xavier. She would do anything to protect her marriage. She was worried. Her confidence was shaken. Ella spoke again. If you know what's good for you, just leave. Ophelia blinked. If Xavier tells me that he doesn't want me, I'll leave. Not before then. Where did this sudden confidence come from? Asked Ella, taunting her. Who you think you are? Will a man like William care about a woman like you when I arrive? Play a joke! Ophelia looked at Ella with a serious expression. Ella, you like Xavier a lot, right? 
That's why you're talking to me today. You want to get rid of me. But that won't happen. I know my past will make people think I'm not worthy of Xavier. But I won't leave him. Because that's what I promised him. Ella glared angrily at Ophelia. I really did not expect you to be so shamelessly stubborn. Isn't that what it is? To love someone? Ophelia smiled faintly. Ella picked up her cup of coffee and threw it in Ophelia's face. Ophelia was too slow to react, and the coffee splashed all over her. Ophelia, you should lay off, Ella said angrily. If Ophelia should date William, she Ophelia picked up a tissue from the table and wiped her face in clothes. She ignored Ella. Ella saw the kiss marks on Ophelia's neck, poking out from under her collar. The mark shot into Ella's heart like an arrow. Xavier was intimate with Ophelia. Ella couldn't believe it. Ella closed her eyes in shock, then opened them again. She pointed at the kiss marks. Ophelia, you're really a capable player, but nothing has changed. Just because you've done it a few times with William does not mean the position of each president is yours. What? It's for you. Ophelia lowered her hand. Then is it yours? Ella didn't expect Ophelia to answer this way. It seems I was too gentle with you, Ophelia said. Ella, if you like Xavier, just say it. That way we can compete fairly. But please, don't fabricate things. Ella found that funny. Do you think I made it all up? Didn't you? Ophelia asked, seriously. Is the engagement between you and Xavier even real? Is there a story between you two? As far as I know, Xavier doesn't have a girlfriend, and he doesn't have a fiancé either. Ophelia, how are you so sure? Because he told me everything. Ella laughed. How do you know he didn't lie to you? I believe him, Ophelia said firmly. Ophelia, you're too blind. What makes you think he's true? Because he's Xavier. Ella bit her lip. She had no retort for that. Yes, he was Xavier. That's why she wanted to work so hard for him. She wanted to give her all for him, but she never had the courage to say it out loud. Today, Ophelia had. Ophelia stood up. Ella, I'll take my leave now. And with that, Ophelia took out some money from her purse and put it on the table. She then turned around and left. Behind her, Nathan, who was sitting at the next table, also stood up and left after giving Ella a cold look. Xavier and Nick sat face to face in a restaurant in Boston, with their cell phones placed in front of them, listening to the conversation between Ophelia and Ella. Nathan had broadcast for them. Nick looked at Xavier and smiled. Didn't expect that. Expect what? I didn't expect Ophelia to be so strong, Nick replied, immediately giving a thumbs up. She's the first woman who dared talk back to Ella in such a manner. I'm impressed. Xavier picked up a cup of coffee on the table, but suddenly put it down without drinking it. What, you don't want to drink anymore? Nick asked. Xavier nodded. Not drinking coffee anymore. It's stopped. He called the waiter and asked him to serve him a cup of green tea. Nick didn't question Xavier's actions. The coffee here wasn't that good anyway. Xavier, since Ella met with Ophelia, she's definitely going to try something else next. Ever since Xavier heard what Ophelia had said just now, he was feeling warm toward her. He admired how much she loved him. He was still unable to calm down. Wasn't this the test of love? To love a person, you tolerate everything about them. Their ailments, their shortcomings. You don't need them to change anything for you. They only need to be themselves. And now Ophelia had proved it to him. That her love was true. The waiter brought a cup of green tea. Picking it up, Xavier exclaimed out loud, Ophelia, you've brought me such happiness. He took a sip of tea, seized with the desire to suddenly hug her. Nick saw Xavier's doting smile. He laughed. Xavier was in love. Nobody had believed it possible. John scoffed at the idea from the start. Even when Ophelia had been introduced as Xavier's wife, everyone thought the whole thing was a joke. Some sort of contract, perhaps. And Nick had agreed with them. Xavier wasn't a touchy-feely sort of person. After all, Ella had been walking around pining for him for so many years without any success. Ella had thought that to be with Xavier, she needed to be strong and ruthless. But she was wrong. Nick sighed. 
Truth was, they were all wrong. What Xavier wanted the most was a simple and honest relationship. That's what he got when Ophelia came into his life. Everything that happened after was so natural. Xavier heard Nick sigh. What's the matter? Nothing. Feel like I'm a bachelor. <laughs> How pitiful. Nick laughed at himself. Xavier understood what Nick meant. Nick, I've never forgotten my responsibilities. But there are always one or two accidents in life that make you want to change. True. Nick nodded. Xavier, I didn't think too much of you and Ophelia as a couple. But now I think I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. There are more challenges waiting for the both of you, I'm sure. But I truly hope you can overcome them together. Xavier looked at the time. Let's head back. Nick laughed. Are you in a hurry to see Madam? Xavier didn't deny it. Nick, I'll bear Ella's behavior this one last time. Nick nodded. He already knew that Ella had crossed every line with Xavier. And now Xavier wouldn't let her get away with anything. Xavier hurriedly walked out, leaving Nick to deal with the bill. For the first time, Xavier felt like returning home. He couldn't wait to see her. It was eight in the evening when Xavier arrived home. When he walked into the living room, it was so quiet that Xavier felt strange. Ophelia didn't seem to be there. Xavier took off his jacket. Is Ophelia not here? She still hasn't come back yet, replied Liza. Xavier frowned. She hasn't come back? Liza shook her head. Nathan also hasn't come back. Xavier's heart tightened when he heard this. Did something have happened? He took out his phone and immediately called Ophelia. Call connected, but no one answered. At that moment, Xavier started to get nervous. An indescribable uneasiness started to set in. He immediately called Nathan. Again, no answer. Xavier couldn't sit still any longer. He took out his phone and made another call. Aiden, get over here. Right away. Aiden answered when he heard Xavier's voice. Aiden ran over to Xavier's place in a hurry. He didn't look as if he even had time to change his clothes. Mr. Woods! Aiden exclaimed when he saw Xavier's expression. It seemed that something had happened. Xavier said calmly, Track Nathan immediately. Very well, Aiden said. Within moments, he had found him. Let's go! shouted Xavier anxiously. It was the first time he had felt this way. Aiden and Xavier set off immediately. Liza watched them go with a worried look on her face. Hopefully... Something bad had happened to Ophelia. Xavier was not himself when it came to the welfare of his wife. This is something that Liza had witnessed herself. Xavier called Nathan again. This time, Xavier picked up the phone. Where are you? asked Xavier. Mr. Woods, I'm sorry. I lost your wife. Nathan's voice was not loud, but Xavier could hear it clearly. Xavier frowned. What's going on? I had a car accident on the way to pick her up. It's a mess here. Right now, I'm separated from her. Just wait. I'll be right there. Aiden heard the conversation and sped up the car, hoping to arrive soon. The car was soon stopped at the scene of the incident. Police were already present. The road ahead has been blocked, sir. Please take a detour. A policewoman walked over and said to Aiden. Xavier got out and said to her, My wife is inside. I have to go in. You can go in, but please park the car out of the way. Aiden, wait for me here, Xavier said and left. Before Aiden could say anything, Xavier was gone. The scene was full of people. Xavier saw doctors and more policemen. It was a mess. He took a few steps forward, but had to stop, because he also saw other cars that were in trouble. It was a pile-up. Xavier stood where he was hoping to see Ophelia, but in all the commotion, he still couldn't see her. Mr. Woods, shouted Nathan when he found Xavier. Xavier didn't bother keeping his calm when he saw Nathan. What exactly is going on? Leading Xavier through the scene, Nathan told him exactly what had happened. After Ophelia and Ella went their separate ways in the afternoon, Nathan took Ophelia back to the company. Once she and Jane had finished work on a new design plan, Nathan called the car to take her home. When the car arrived, Ophelia suddenly wanted to eat cake, so she stopped at a bakery to buy some. The accident happened at the same time. A BMW sports car seemed to have gotten out of control, flipped, and hit another car coming from the opposite direction. A third car crashed into them. A bus on the path was forced to swerve to avoid the third car. 
It flew off the sidewalk and crashed into the train station off-road. Many people died on the spot. Some people were panicking. Some ran away in fear, while others rushed forward to save them. The scene was chaotic. It all happened right in front of Nathan's eyes. Even now, he still felt a lingering fear. If Ophelia hadn't stopped the car for Kate, they would have been hit in the accident. When I got out of the car to find Mrs. Woods, she was gone. I'm sorry, Mr. Woods, I did not take care of her, but I, I really can't find her. When Xavier heard this, his heart sped up. His panic grew as he searched for a bakery anywhere on the road. People looking might think that he was a maniac, the way he was half walking and half running everywhere. But he didn't care. Xavier finally screamed, Ophelia, you're all right. Xavier forced himself to calm down. There was no way she could be at the scene. Nathan, wait here. I'll go check the way ahead. Mr. Woods, let me go. Xavier shook his head. No, you wait right here. If Ophelia comes this way, you call me, okay? Ophelia's bag and phone were both in the car, so she definitely couldn't contact anyone else right now. Xavier walked forward, his eyes scanning every area around him. There was too much chaos. There were several ambulances full of doctors and nurses. The traffic police were also at the scene. Xavier finally saw the bus. There were firemen rescuing people trapped in it. All sorts of cries sounded out at the scene. Xavier frowned. The sounds made him feel hopeless, especially those mournful wails. The smell of blood permeated the air, making him extremely uncomfortable. But he kept walking. Xavier's gaze suddenly fell on a temporary treatment spot that was blocked by two ambulances. A familiar figure suddenly appeared in his line of sight. The figure was in a white shirt and light blue jeans and was sitting on the ground holding a child in her arms. While comforting the child, she was also helping a nurse treat his wounds. Xavier heaved a sigh of relief when he found her. He ran towards her. He found it hard to describe his feelings of joy right then. Suddenly, he stopped. He saw her gentle face as she comforted the child. He could very well believe that she was covered in some sort of unearthly light. The way she carried the child. He knew in his heart she would definitely be a good mother in the future. Ophelia! Xavier shouted. Ophelia was stunned when she heard Xavier's voice. She raised her head and saw Xavier standing in the crowd. For a moment, she couldn't believe it. Oh! Xavier shouted again. This time, Ophelia heard it clearly. She smiled at him. The nurse said to Ophelia, Give me the child. You can go. Ophelia nodded, handed the baby to the nurse and stood up. She had been sitting in one position for far too long and lost her balance. Xavier immediately ran to Ophelia when he saw her staggering. After Ophelia steadied herself, she saw Xavier coming to her side. Xavier, why are you here? Xavier was shocked when he saw Ophelia's white shirt, which was marked in red. His heart skipped a beat. Are you injured? Ophelia shook her head. No, just bruised. I fell to the ground, but it's nothing serious. She reached out her hand to smooth over his frown. I'm fine, she repeated. Are you sure you're all right? Xavier asked again. His heart trembled when he saw the red blood on Ophelia's shirt up close. It's not mine. Ophelia reassured him, knowing he would be worried. Xavier finally heaved a sigh of relief. He reached out and pulled Ophelia into his embrace. He held her tightly, feeling the warmth of her body. Only then did he feel it was real. I was really scared for you. Xavier's voice was suddenly... Very weak. Ophelia was shocked when she heard Xavier's heart beating so loudly. Ophelia figured that Xavier had been really worried about her. She buried her head in his chest and hugged him more tightly. She had been a bit depressed in the afternoon because of Ella. However, at that moment, her sadness vanished into thin air. After what seemed like a long time, Xavier let go of Ophelia and checked her thoroughly to see if she was okay. Finally, he saw a bloody wound on her arm. Still saying that you weren't injured? I told you, I just fell. It's a bruise. Actually, it's really nothing. Xavier held Ophelia's hand tightly. Let's go to the hospital. I really don't need to. We'll just apply some antiseptic on it when we get home, Ophelia explained. Ophelia turned around and saw that the nurse had finished treating the child. She quickly crouched down and picked up the child. It's okay. Nobody's going to get hurt anymore, Ophelia said softly. 
Another ambulance arrived at the scene, and soon more nurses and doctors were pouring in. What's the situation now? One of the male doctors asked. Ophelia raised her head. When she saw who it was, she was stunned. Eric? Eric looked at Ophelia in surprise. Ophelia? Ophelia smiled. I really didn't expect us to meet under such circumstances. Are you okay? Eric asked when he saw Ophelia's blood-covered clothes. Ophelia shook her head. No, I'm, I'm fine. Eric took the child from Ophelia without taking his eyes off of her. Finally, he said, I've got to get busy. Ophelia nodded. She understood Eric had responsibilities. Looking at Eric and the skillful way he handled himself in the situation, she couldn't help but be amazed by how much he had changed. He had become even more upstanding as a doctor. He had achieved his dreams. Xavier, who was standing next to Ophelia, was a little hurt by her reaction to Eric. He could see the admiration in her eyes, and he suddenly felt uncomfortable. He narrowed his eyes and grabbed Ophelia's hand. Let's go! Ophelia looked at Xavier and asked, What's wrong? Xavier said in a smug voice, There are professionals here to deal with the situation now. There's no need for you to stay here any longer. He pulled Ophelia's hand a little too forcefully. He didn't know why he was angry. That Eric seemed to be a threat to him for some reason. Xavier would never give his woman away to anyone else. He would not let her be taken away either. Ophelia frowned. Xavier, that hurt! Xavier stopped in his tracks. Where does it hurt you? Ophelia pointed directly at Xavier, who was grabbing her wrist. Xavier let go of her hand and saw the imprint of his fingers on her wrist. He felt a bit guilty. He had lost control and overexerted himself. Are you all right? What's the matter with you? Ophelia asked loudly. She couldn't understand Xavier's behavior. It's like he had suddenly turned into a different person. Xavier closed his eyes and took a deep breath. He put his hand on Ophelia's waist. Ophelia, you're not allowed to leave me. You're mine. Ophelia blinked her eyes, wondering if she understood the meaning of Xavier's words. However, she felt Xavier was a little uneasy. She reached out her hand and gently patted Xavier's back. I'm not going anywhere. Xavier brought Ophelia back to the car, where Nathan was waiting anxiously. Looking at her, he immediately asked, Mrs. Woods, are you all right? Ophelia nodded. It's nothing. Let's leave, Xavier immediately ordered. Yes, Mr. Woods. At the villa, the moment Xavier carried Ophelia through the door, Liza immediately walked over. Mr. and Mrs. Woods, welcome back. Get the first aid kit, please, Xavier said as he laid Ophelia gently on the sofa. When Liza nodded, she saw the patch of blood on Ophelia's clothes. <laughs> Liza cried, shocked. Ophelia immediately shook her head. Not mine. Hurry up with the first aid, said Xavier. Liza went to get the kit and returned immediately. Give it to me, Xavier said as he took the kit. Xavier reached out to untie Ophelia's shirt. Xavier, I can do it myself, Ophelia said as she pushed his hand away. I will change my clothes first. Xavier sighed and nodded. Let Liza help you change. Liza stepped forward to help Ophelia up. Mrs. Woods, I'm here for you. Ten minutes later, Liza came downstairs with the clothes Ophelia had been wearing. Xavier asked, worried, Where's Ophelia? She said that she wanted to take a bath first, Liza said quietly. She knew that Xavier was worried and did not want to get him agitated. Xavier frowned when he heard that. Ophelia had wounds on her body and was taking a bath. His heart couldn't help but tremble when his gaze landed on the white shirt that was now dyed red. Fortunately, the blood wasn't hers. Throw those clothes away, Xavier ordered. You cannot do that. Mrs. Woods just said the clothes were her colleagues. She will have to wash them herself later. How can we wash these clothes? And even if we did, would any of her colleagues still want them? Xavier asked. He still really didn't understand Ophelia sometimes. Liza also felt that what Xavier said made sense, so she decided to just throw the clothes away. Xavier went upstairs, sat down, and stared at the bathroom door. Even now, he still felt absent-minded, as if everything that had just happened wasn't real. He remembered what Nathan said. If Ophelia hadn't left her car to buy cake, she would have been gone by now. When Xavier thought about it, his heart started beating faster. 
The bathroom door opened, interrupting Xavier's train of thought. He immediately stood when he saw Ophelia, who came out wrapped in a towel. She saw Xavier, and she stopped at the door. Xavier walked towards her and asked in a low voice, Are you done? Ophelia nodded. Seeing that her hair was still dripping wet with water, Xavier walked into the bathroom and took a towel to help Ophelia dry her hair. I'll do it myself. Ophelia tried to reach out and grab the towel in Xavier's hand, but he ended up pulling her into his embrace. Ophelia, I need to tell you something. What is it? If anything like today happens in the future, you must tell me immediately, Xavier said fiercely. He really couldn't accept this kind of thing happening a second time. Ophelia looked at Xavier, worried. She touched his face and gave him a reassured smile. Promise you, if anything like this happens again, the first thing I'll do is find you. Xavier smiled, feeling relieved. He put his head on Ophelia's shoulder. He smelled the scent of her body after the bath. He kissed her lightly on her smooth shoulder. It's he, Ophelia exclaimed. Her voice soft. Xavier smiled, opened his mouth, and bit her shoulder. Ophelia felt goosebumps all over her body. Xavier, what are you doing? Xavier let go of Ophelia. He looked at the marks on Ophelia's shoulder. I wanted to leave a mark on you to let everyone know that you only belong to me. When Ophelia heard Xavier's words, she felt he was being a little childish. She pushed him away. How can there be any other men? Why, isn't there one? Xavier asked bluntly. There's Eric from before and Damon, obviously. Who knows what other men might appear in the future? Ophelia looked at Xavier for a long while before she spoke. Xavier, are you jealous? Xavier raised his eyebrows. He definitely wouldn't admit the truth in front of Ophelia. I'm just stating a fact, said Xavier. In the future... When you meet other men, you have to show them that you're married. Oh, so I can meet other men now? Ophelia laughed when she heard him. Xavier sounded really jealous. He reminded her of Ella. When she met Ella earlier that day, she realized the kind of women who went after Xavier were the gutsy, daring kind. Ella was a good example. Ophelia, too, was a good example, because she stood up for him. Seeing that Ophelia was lost in thought, Xavier reached out to cup her face with his hands. Ophelia, he whispered. Yeah? Ophelia said, blinking her eyes and looking at him. What's wrong? Xavier placed his hands on her shoulders. I have nothing to do with Ella, he said clearly. He didn't want Ophelia to have any grudges in her heart, nor did he want her to have any misunderstandings. Ophelia hadn't expected Xavier to suddenly say something like that. She was a bit taken aback recovered after a slight pause and smiled at him. I know. You wouldn't lie to me. Xavier relaxed. Finally, he looked at her wound. I should take care of that now. After applying some antiseptic, Xavier asked Liza to prepare a new dish for Ophelia. Ophelia knew that Xavier hadn't eaten yet, so she asked Liza to prepare something for the both of them. Over dinner, Ophelia also discussed the next day's work with Xavier. The TV was showing a report of the accident in the city. Distracted, Ophelia set down her spoon and watched it with rapt attention. More than ten people had died, and several others had been heavily injured. The mayor, Tyler Quinlan, was also present at the scene. He was being interviewed by the reporters about the incident. Mayor Quinlan spoke briefly to the reporters, where he assured everyone that an investigation would definitely take place, and it would provide a satisfactory explanation. Xavier tried to get Ophelia to eat her dinner, but she kept ignoring him. Was really serious, Ophelia said. She wasn't feeling particularly hungry. Xavier glanced at the mayor. This was the first time he had seen Quinlan. It looked like the kind of person who was meant to be inspiring and had a sense of integrity. Ophelia looked as though she really admired him. On Xavier's insistence, Ophelia lowered her head and ate a few more spoonfuls of food. She mumbled under her breath. I must be having a headache right now. Something like this happens, then the mayor will surely be the one to bear the brunt of it. Something about the way she said the mayor's name made Xavier curious. You know him? Yes. Ophelia nodded. How? Xavier asked casually. Ophelia swallowed the food in her mouth and answered simply, He's Eric's father. 
This came as a shock to Xavier. He immediately looked at Ophelia. What did you just say? Ophelia repeated. He is Eric's father. Xavier didn't know what to say. Eric's father was Tyler Quinlan? Tyler and Robert's schemes ever came to light, then his career as the mayor would be over. And not to mention the revelation that Eric was half-brother of Damon. Xavier wondered how all these secrets would play out. A few days after the accident, Ophelia received a call from Eric inviting her to dinner. Where's the dinner happening? Ophelia asked. Same place, Eric replied. Eric, the old place's been shut down for years. Choose another place, please. I can't be. It's close, Count. Hugh ended the call soon after agreeing upon a new venue. At the end of the day, Ophelia called Nathan to tell him not to pick her up. Ophelia called a cab to reach the dinner venue, but she didn't know that Nathan was still following her. Ever since the accident, Xavier had given strict orders to Nathan to protect and keep Ophelia safe. Ophelia sat in the cab, looking out at the familiar scenery. The car soon arrived at her location. Ophelia had often visited this place with her university friends, back when she was still a student. Ophelia stood before the restaurant. She looked up at the newly renovated signboard, which was twice as big as before. Oh! Ophelia turned around as she heard her name being called. Eric was dressed casually. He looked just like he had all the way back when they were in school, albeit a little more mature. Ophelia greeted him as he walked up to her. Eric, it's been so long. Eric looked at Ophelia closely. She touched his chin as if he was evaluating and concentrating on her. When Ophelia saw Eric's expression, she became conscious of her appearance. Is there something r wrong with me? Eric nodded, looked left and right, and clicked his tongue a few times before saying, Oh, has he classic surgeon or, like, been taking pills or something? You look different now. You're the one who needs a doctor's visit, Ophelia retorted. Eric shook his head. There's been no visits or Botox. That's even more incredible. The Ophelia Hill in front of him was completely different from the person he knew two years ago. If it wasn't for her eyes, he wouldn't even be able to recognize her. Current Ophelia looked even younger than she did two years ago. Her dress sense had radically changed. She looked much more beautiful and radiant. Beautiful, Eric finally exclaimed after the longest time. Ophelia smiled. Thank you. Eric asked for her hand to lead her to the table. Had I known you'd been coming like this, I wouldn't have dressed so shabbily. I feel embarrassed now for looking like this. Huh, what a pity. Ophelia looked at Eric with a missed expression. She ignored him and walked straight into the restaurant. After the two sat down, Eric continued to chatter on. Eric, if you continue like this, I'll just leave. Ophelia put down the glass of water in her hand. Eric immediately raised his hand. Okay, sorry, I won't talk anymore. After that, two of them went silent for a while. Ophelia looked at the menu. Eric couldn't bear the silence for long. See, this is what happens when I don't speak. You don't even know the house specials here. Ophelia handed the menu over to Eric. You order for us, then. Eric smiled at Ophelia, picked a few dishes from the card, and placed the order. So, you and Damon, this completely over now? Eric put aside his previous teasing of her. Right now, he was concerned about Ophelia. She nodded. We got divorced a few months ago. Eric had no idea of it happening until after the incident. In the past few days, he had spent quite a bit of time trying to understand the situation. Two years ago, he had expressed his opinion on the sudden marriage between Ophelia and Damon. At the time, he casually mentioned the two wouldn't last long. Now that it was reality, he felt bad about it. Actually, he had met Damon a couple of days ago and heard quite a few things from him. Damon never seemed particularly chatty about the situation. He just said that Ophelia had been with the head of Sequoia ever since she divorced him. Eric saw that man at the scene of the car accident. It was obvious he was very affectionate towards Ophelia. Judging from his appearance, the man must have rushed over immediately after the accident. So, how have you been? Eric asked. Very good, Ophelia replied. It was good she was doing well. Everything else didn't matter. Out of concern, Eric also asked. Is he good? You? Ophelia looked at Eric. Eric, I think you're pretty aware of what sort of person he is. I'm sure you'd be running your mouth about him if you didn't. Eric laughed. Oh, girl, you'd totally get me, even after all this time. Ophelia smiled. Right. It's just because we're so familiar with each other that Damon felt something was happening between us. What? 
after having thought about Ophelia's words, Eric cursed. What an idiot. You can be so petty. Had I known there was something like that wrong with him, I would have stopped you right at the altar. The more he thought about it, the angrier he got. Eric continued. Can't believe how stupid he and Emily are. Ophelia didn't want to pursue this matter any longer, so she didn't speak. Oh, you'll be even better in the future. You're already doing so well. I am good now, Eric. Don't worry about me, Ophelia said. Seeing her happy, Eric relaxed. That man's truly good to you, so I can rest assured. I'd like to meet him, and before anything happens to screw it up, put a ring on it. Actually, he and I are already married. Ophelia didn't feel the need to hide anything from Eric. He was stunned. What? I married him, Ophelia repeated. I don't want to hide it from you, so I didn't say anything about this to others. Eric flapped his forehead. Wow, okay, now I'm confused. Why were you in such a hurry to get married? Ophelia smiled. Love. This was the first time Eric had ever heard Ophelia say anything like this. Are you in love? Yeah. Ophelia nodded. At this time, Damon and Madeline entered the restaurant. The moment Damon entered, he saw Ophelia sitting face to face with a man. He frowned, then immediately strode over. However, he said, Eric, don't worry. This is it. It'll last. When Damon heard this, his heart stopped. He couldn't help but ask, Do you think you can keep being married to him? Ophelia and Eric looked up at the same time and saw Damon's dark face. Why are you here? Eric asked. Damon ignored Eric's words. He stared straight at Ophelia. Do you really want to continue this with him? Aren't you being too naive? Facing Damon's question, Ophelia retracted her gaze and answered, Yes! I want this! Are you blind? Damon said angrily. How do you even know about Xavier Woods? How can you be so confident? Ophelia felt immune to such words. Actually, even if you know more about him, it's much useless information, don't you think? I bothered about you. The fire burned in Damon's eyes hearing Ophelia's words. Ophelia, you sure are doing well now. We'll see what happens later. Madeline felt upset when she heard Ophelia's words. She walked up to her, full of anger. Ophelia raised her head and looked at Madeline. This is a private matter between him and me. Even if he wants to use me, I don't care. Ophelia, you've been brainwashed with love. Madeline shook her head. She felt very disappointed with her former sister-in-law. Damon clenched his fist. Eric, in the meanwhile, had enough and stood up. He spoke. All right, that's enough. Your family is useless and corrupt, Damon. This moment, Damon finally recognized Eric. After all these years, Quinlan was back. No wonder Ophelia was out tonight with someone other than Xavier. It seemed like Eric still had a deep friendship with her. Probably why they were meeting. You're back. Damon's voice was very calm. Eric laughed. Damon, don't tell me you didn't see me until just now. It was at this moment that Madeline noticed Eric. Damon? Who's this? Madeline asked her brother. Damon was still looking at Ophelia from the corner of his eye. This is Eric Quinlan, son of Mayor Quinlan. Madeline sized up Eric. He looked handsome and seemed to be the same age as Damon. Two of them seemed to look similar. However, he was different from what she had imagined. Eric Quinlan looked like a grounded and sordid person, the kind of person one would be friends with. He didn't look like someone in a position of power. When Eric saw that Madeline was staring at him, the corner of his mouth curled up. I'll feel embarrassed if Miss Hoffman keeps staring at me. I know I'm good looking, but I'm not used to being stared at like that. However, if you're willing, I wouldn't mind giving you a photograph. That was the first time anyone had spoken like that to Madeline Hoffman. Talking about... I don't like someone like you. Take a look at yourself in the mirror. Eric laughed when he heard that. Sorry, I prefer more laid-back women, so you're not my type, to be honest. Ross, Madeline replied. Ophelia saw the two of them arguing, and to her recollection, this was the first time a woman had ever picked a verbal quarrel with Eric. He's interested in the argument, too. But when? Eric decided to drop his manners in front of Madeline. 
It was you who was staring at me. Why don't you just admit that I'm good looking? Madeline Grimace. Don't be so cocky. You're nothing to me. I've met goldfish better looking than you. Eric smirked. Well, even if you're comparing me to sea creatures, you still are a few rungs below. You need a lot of education, it seems. So uneducated for so, so rich. Madeline's face was full of indignation. It's amazing to talk to the mayor's son. No care. It's a mayor's no brains. Damn. I just want to bicker with someone dumb like you. She dared to provoke me. You're going to regret this. Ophelia looked at the argument and found it hilarious. In fact, they were on par with each other when it came to arguments. Ophelia laughed. Is it really necessary for these two to do this? Come on, just relax. When Damon saw Ophelia smile, he was astounding. Her smile was gorgeous. He had never seen her smile so sincerely before. Good on her. He forgot to retract the hidden feelings in his eyes for a moment. Seemingly distracted by her smile, Eric and Madeline also stopped arguing for a while. It's wrong. Eric wanted to know why Ophelia was smiling. Two of you are at it like dogs. It's really funny, Ophelia said with a smile. Eric immediately rejected the label. Hey, be more careful with your words. If my wife finds out about this, I'm a goner. What? Are you married, Eric? Ophelia was surprised at the discovery. Madeline seemed to look slightly deflated when she heard Eric. She didn't expect him to be married. Eric smiled. Not yet, but many women are interested in me. Ophelia looked confused. What did that mean? There were many candidates? Eric knew that Ophelia didn't like being taken around in circles, so he explained with a smile. There were celebrities who married their own fans. Of course, I could just choose one from my fan club. Madeline retorted. Oh, what a playboy. Hey, I'm not playboy. I'm very particular about relationships. Okay? Eric reiterated. Madeline despised him. Damon's gaze was fixed on Ophelia the whole time, as if he couldn't look away from her. This made Xavier, who was not standing too far away, annoyed. Damon's look definitely meant he had something in mind. Xavier silently watched the scene. Even Aiden, who was standing behind him, didn't dare to make a sound. This was the calm before the storm. Xavier walked towards them until he was right behind, before he said, Ophelia! Hearing Xavier's familiar magnetic voice, Ophelia immediately looked up. When she saw Xavier standing behind Eric, she smiled. Why are you here? Ophelia immediately stood up. In Xavier's eyes, there was only Ophelia. He didn't see anyone else. I've come to take you home, Xavier answered. Liza has prepared a lot of your favorite dishes today. Ophelia smiled at Xavier. Really? Xavier nodded. If it's almost done over here, then let's go home. Yeah. Ophelia nodded and turned to pick up her bag. I'll head back now, Ophelia said to Eric. I'll treat you to a meal next time. Eric also looked at Xavier, who was standing in front of him. He was taller than Eric and exuded an aura of strength, especially his blue-gray eyes, which seemed to be penetrating into someone's soul. Xavier nodded at him indifferently. Ophelia walked to Xavier's side. We can go now. Xavier Woods saw Ophelia standing beside him. He reached out and took her hand into his own. Ophelia's face was slightly flushed. She lowered her head, not daring to look at others' expressions. It was Eric's first time seeing Ophelia like this. She had snuggled up to Xavier like a little bird. The two felt like a perfect match. It was also Damon's first time seeing his ex-wife like this. She had never been like this with him. Madeline suddenly felt envious of Ophelia. A romantic scene from the movies, one she had yearned for herself. It seemed Ophelia really loved Xavier. She looked at Xavier, her feelings toward him complicated. This man stole Damon's wife. She hated him, but this man was her uncle. The relationship between them was complicated. However, she had no enmity towards Xavier Woods. Maybe it was because they were related by blood. Xavier also looked over at Madeline. He stopped for a few seconds and then retracted his gaze. Ophelia and I will be taking our leave, Xavier said. Before anyone had reacted, the two of them had already walked out. Eric immediately got up to go after them. When he reached the door, he saw that Ophelia had already gotten in the car. Eric shouted. Wait! Xavier put his hand on the door of the car and turned around to see Eric running over. Can I speak with you? At this moment, Eric looked serious. Xavier nodded. Okay. Ophelia looked worried when she heard this. 
She wanted to get out of the car as well. Wait for me in the car, Xavier said while patting Ophelia's head. Eric glanced at Ophelia. Don't worry, I'm not going to bite him. I just want to talk to him. Ophelia frowned. She knew Eric wouldn't do anything to Xavier, but she was still worried. Xavier closed the door. Ophelia leaned on the window and watched Xavier and Eric walk to the side. Perhaps they knew that Ophelia was looking at them. Both of them were looking in the direction of the car. Ophelia was shocked. She immediately sat back down and didn't dare to continue watching or attempting to eavesdrop. She picked up her phone and absentmindedly scrolled through Twitter. What was Eric going to say to Xavier? She was curious. Just as she was scrolling, the car door opened. Ophelia saw Xavier get in the car and told the driver to go. You're done? Already? Ophelia asked. Xavier nodded. It's just a couple of words. Ophelia looked out the window and saw Eric standing on the pavement, looking at the car's direction. Xavier didn't stop Ophelia. He just sat in silence. Ophelia only sat up when she could no longer see Eric. So, what did you two talk about? Xavier looked at Ophelia. You want to know? I, I do. If you don't want to tell me, though, it's just fine, Ophelia replied. Xavier smiled lightly. I didn't say anything. He told me to take good care of you. Otherwise, you'll be rude to me and make my life hell. Eric's always been like that. You don't have to be serious with him at all, Ophelia answered. Xavier nodded his head in agreement. He had also noticed it when Madeline had been arguing with him earlier. However, Eric said those words to him with an air of seriousness. He was also surprised Ophelia told Eric about the marriage. From this, it could be seen that she had an unshakable trust in him. Xavier made it a point to be a bit more polite towards him in the future. I, um, have something else to tell you. What is it? Tell me. I came here for dinner with Eric. I, I really didn't expect to see Damon and Madeline. Ophelia didn't want him to misunderstand her. Xavier reached out his hand to press Ophelia's. I know. It's all good. Ophelia's heart was finally at ease after hearing Xavier's words. Back at the restaurant, Ophelia knew Damon had been staring at her the whole time. She pretended not to see it. Ophelia didn't know what Damon meant by that look and didn't want to guess. So when Xavier had appeared, she let out a sigh of relief. She was worried that she would have to face Damon by herself. Moreover, she also felt that Xavier must have noticed this when he entered. That was why she chose to tell this to Xavier, as long as he knew it clearly. Ophelia, I noticed something today. Xavier started. What? Xavier stared at Ophelia as the smile on his face gradually disappeared. The air in the car became tense. She whispered, What's wrong? Don't interact with the Hoffmans too much in the future, Xavier said. Ophelia nodded. All right. Xavier had more to say. When Damon was staring at you earlier, I really didn't like it. Ophelia was stunned. She had planned to play dumb about this. She didn't dare to look Xavier in the eye. What staring? What look he gave you? You didn't notice? Ophelia blinked lightly and nodded her head once. I didn't see anything. Xavier chose not to oppose Ophelia. I'll let you off this time, he said in her ear. Ophelia had just raised her head when Xavier kissed her. A few days later, Ophelia had made up her mind. She would not even see the faces of anyone from her ex-husband's family. But when she was walking into Sequoia, she was met with a familiar face. Ophelia looked at Damon and frowned. This happened to him recently. Earlier, when they were married, she hardly saw him. Now he was turning up everywhere she went. Why? She didn't want to talk to Damon, so she pretended not to acknowledge him and tried to go another way. Ophelia! Damon reached out to grab her hand. Ophelia jerked her hand away. Damon, what exactly do you want? Let me go. You can't keep showing up like this all the time. I need you to come with me, he said. I don't feel no. Ophelia yelled at him, trying to wrench free from his grasp. Just as she was about to be pushed into the car by Damon, Aiden walked up to the car and grabbed his arm. Damon looked back at him, and his upper lip curled into a snarl. He tried to wrench free of his grip, but Aiden pushed him onto the car and twisted his hands behind his back. Then, Aiden looked at Ophelia. Are you all right? Ophelia nodded. I'm fine. Please, wait for me in the car, 
Aiden said to her, and focused his attention back on Damon. Ophelia glanced at him. He was in pain. And she said, Maybe you should let him go. Aiden hesitated. If you let go of Damon now, Xavier would be very upset with him. Ophelia sensed this and said, Don't worry. I'll explain it to Xavier if needed. I'm fine. Just let him go. Aiden slowly and reluctantly let go of Damon. But he stayed close, lest Damon tried to do something again. Ophelia looked at Aiden gratefully. Then she turned her attention to Damon. Don't let me find you near me again. Ophelia, don't you get... I love you. I love you so much. And I can't bear to see you with that Damon was unwilling to accept things. He was uncomfortable at the realization that Xavier had treated her better than he had. But he had pushed that thought away. Ophelia continued. Enough! You can leave now. With that, Ophelia turned around and started walking towards the office. Damon held his arm that had been yanked by Aiden and shouted in her direction. The way you with you is you. Damon suddenly stopped. He'd seen Xavier walk outside, Nick by his side. Xavier looked at him coldly and said, Why don't you finish what you were saying? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, you piece of shit? Damon said. He didn't hold back. You have anything to confess? Everyone has their own private matters that they don't want others to know about. So I'd suggest that you mind your own business and leave immediately, Xavier said. He walked toward Damon and lowered his voice. Don't think that you can threaten me just because you know something. What you know is just the tip of the iceberg. It's no threat to me. But in my hands, there is evidence that can destroy your family. The ball's in your court now. Damon gritted his teeth. You jerk. How dare you? You're not good to her. Damon yelled, looking at Ophelia and then back at Xavier. Xavier didn't answer. He walked to Ophelia, took her hand in his, and said, Forgot to tell you something. Ophelia and I are married. I guess that settles the question of who's suitable for whom. This news hit Damon like a thunderbolt. Xavier and Ophelia were married? This meant that... Xavier also saw the despair in his eyes. He had already given Damon plenty of chances, but he'd had enough. Ophelia was stunned. She didn't expect Xavier to say that to Damon. We're going home. Come on, Xavier said and pulled Ophelia's hand. Nick looked at Damon. He was gaping in shock, wringing his hands together. He was a mess. Nick suddenly felt sorry for this poor man. Damon, you better take care of yourself. With that, Nick turned and left. Damon leaned against the car. He was done. At the Hoffmans, Damon finally came back reeking of alcohol. Today, Robert and everyone else had gone to a party, so they weren't at home. Elijah was sitting in the living room watching TV. When he heard the door open, he turned around to take a look. Did you go drinking again? He smelled the alcohol on Damon. Damon sat down on the sofa unsteadily. I only had a couple pegs. I'm not drunk. Elijah didn't understand why Damon went drinking. A few days ago, he discussed it with him and thought that Damon was finally getting back on track. Something must have happened. What's wrong? People say that alcohol erases memory. Why can't I forget her? Why? The more I drink, the more I remember her. Damon slurred and slumped down on one side. When Elijah heard this, his face softened. He asked gently, What happened? Damon opened his eyes and looked at Elijah. Xavier is your son, right? Elijah's expression changed instantly. How could Damon know this? Seeing his face fall, Damon laughed. You really know how to keep a secret. Elijah looked at Damon calmly. Everyone knows about this. The funny thing is, I'm the last one to figure it out. Why is it Xavier? Why did Ophelia have to be with him of all people? Elijah was conflicted. One was his grandson, and the other was his own son. He sat there quietly and waited for Damon to finish venting. Why did Xavier choose Ophelia? Damon asked. You know, I think, you know, he's <laughs> using her to win your favor. He'll come back to the family and claim an inheritance, and then you'll throw us out, won't you? He was slurring, tears wetting his face. Elijah frowned. He's probably not coming back. Elijah sighed. 
Damon ignored him. I went to find Ophelia today, and Xavier told me one thing. What is it? Damon's eyes became blurry with tears once more, and he rested his head on the sofa. He told me he and Ophelia were married. Can you... can you believe... Elijah was shocked. Xavier had married Ophelia. What did he mean by all this? He thought they were just together, but who would have thought they would actually get married? He didn't know whether to laugh or cry. At the Riverside Villa, while Xavier was working on the documents in the study, Ophelia brought him a cup of coffee. Hey, we're out of coffee. I'll go and buy some first thing tomorrow, Ophelia said. Xavier stopped what he was doing. No, that's okay. I've uh, decided to cut back on the coffee. Ophelia was momentarily taken aback. Xavier loved his coffee. Why was he getting back? Just all of a sudden? Ophelia inquired. It's uh, upsetting my stomach, Xavier answered casually. Ophelia looked worried. She'd never heard Xavier complain of anything health-related before. Did you want to see a doctor? No need. No, I'll be fine. It's fine. No, you need to eat light and sleep on time. I think the stress is getting to you, Ophelia said, her brow furrowing. Xavier held Ophelia's hand and caressed it. Then he looked at her. Don't worry about it. I'll do as you say, okay? Ophelia finally loosened up a bit and smiled at him. That's more like my husband, she said. Of course. Xavier nodded, smiling back at her. Ophelia looked down at Xavier. She had something she wanted to ask him, but she seemed hesitant. Xavier looked at Ophelia. What's wrong? Why did you tell Damon that we were married? Xavier immediately stood up. Ophelia, you're my wife. The sooner they accept that, the better it'll be for them. Damon needed to know that. He wouldn't stop pestering you otherwise. Ophelia nodded and got up. She held his hand. Wouldn't everyone know about it then? Is that a good thing for you? Xavier, I'm just worried that it'll affect you. The past I can't erase, and you've been pulled into it. Ophelia couldn't let go of the fact that she had a lot of baggage, and she had inadvertently pushed Xavier into it. But Xavier hugged her and said, I don't care about any of that. I only care about you. Ophelia leaned on Xavier's chest, but she wasn't as optimistic as him. Xavier didn't mind that she had a troubled past. Ophelia, you only need to remember this. You're smart, strong, and beautiful, and I love you. Nothing else is important at all. Xavier looked at her tenderly. Ophelia smiled at Xavier weakly, as if to reassure him. However, she felt uneasy. If anything happened, anything that the Hoffmans or her own family did, she hoped Xavier wouldn't get hurt. What are you thinking about? Xavier asked, seeing her lost in thought. Nothing. Xavier hugged her tightly. Ophelia, I can't always stay by your side. Take good care of yourself. If I want you to take care of me or protect me at all times, I'll just be a burden to you. I promise I'll take care of myself. Xavier knew that Ophelia wasn't a delicate person. It was just that he felt like taking care of her all the time, protecting her from the hurtful taunts she had to face from other people. Xavier knew where Damon had wanted to take Ophelia. That's why he nipped his plans in the bud and announced that Ophelia was married. The next day, Ophelia opened her eyes, the early light of dawn falling on her face. Just as she was about to get up, Xavier wrapped his arm around Ophelia's waist. Stay in bed a little longer. Ophelia raised her head and looked at the time. I'm going to be late for work. i got to hurry up and look over some papers. Ophelia moved, but Xavier held her and pulled her close. Before she could say a word, her lips were already covered by Xavier. Their bedroom echoed with noise. When Ophelia went to work, she was already two hours late. She walked into the office, her face red and her hair disheveled. Aren't you feeling unwell today? Why did you come to work? A colleague of Ophelia's asked. Ophelia blushed. Did she really look that bad? When Jane came out of Nick's office and saw Ophelia, she asked her the same question. Why are you here? Jane asked her, puzzled. Ophelia blushed and shook her head. She couldn't say she'd been late because of a hang-up in the bedroom. Instead, Ophelia went along with the assumption. I feel better now. I'm, I'm just here to work. All right, just don't go all out, Jane advised. I know, Ophelia smiled. Jane said teasingly, Well, since you're the CEO's wife, maybe you can just skip work. Ophelia shook her head and laughed. 
No, I can't let this keep me from working now, can I? I'd rather be busy than sitting at home all day. You work too hard, Oaf, James said tenderly. Today, Nick assigned Ophelia some additional assignments. Ophelia looked at the documents in front of her. She wasn't sure if it was Xavier's idea or someone else's. Most of the real estate in New York was controlled by the Hoffmans, but they were losing their grip. Her father's company, Hillcrest, was losing its hold, and it had been desperate for help. Her father, Richard, had gone to Andrew Hoffman for help, a last-ditch effort to save his drowning ass. However, Ophelia knew that Andrew wouldn't want to help Hillcrest get back on its feet. He would acquire it. She was sure of this. Ophelia reached out and pressed her temples. This case wasn't easy. At the end of the day, everyone else started trickling out, but Ophelia was still working. She was poring over Nick's documents, trying to organize them, and racking her head for a good strategy. Are you not heading home? Nick asked Ophelia. Ophelia raised her head. I still need a little more time. She wanted to finish this and leave. Nick didn't say anything, but gave Xavier a heads up. By the time Xavier arrived, Ophelia was already passed out on the table. When Nick saw Xavier, he walked over as well. You're here, Nick said. How long has she been asleep? Xavier asked. It's been a while. Xavier didn't say anything else. He bent down and took Ophelia in his arms. Help me pack her things, Xavier instructed Nick. All right. Nick picked up Ophelia's things and followed Xavier downstairs. After sending them off, Nick turned around, stopping in his tracks. The two of them stood there, silently looking at each other. Nick had countless questions. What was this man's motive this time? Nick walked forward a few steps and stopped in front of him. Why are you here? Nick asked. I came to see them. Nick nodded. They just left. Yeah, I saw. They seem to be having a good time. Nick smiled softly. Yes, Xavier and Ophelia are doing pretty well. Are they really married? Yes, Nick replied. It seemed that Damon had told him everything. Nick looked at the time and said, Mr. Elijah, would you like to have a seat in the office? Elijah shook his head. I have to go back. I just came today to visit them. Them? You just wanted to see Xavier, right? Yes. I wanted to talk to him, Elijah answered. He really wanted to have a good chat with Xavier. This was what he had been hoping for all these years. I can understand that, but I'm not sure whether or not he'll meet with you, Nick said. Before Elijah even reached his house, he received a call from Xavier. He got excited. His son had called him. His hand trembled slightly, and he was unable to utter a single word. I heard from Nick that you want to talk with me. Yes. Elijah could only reply with one word. He had a lot of things to say, but in the end, he couldn't even say a complete sentence. Xavier's voice did not reveal any emotion. Where? At this moment, Elijah felt he was hallucinating. Xavier had asked to meet with him. You want to see me? Elijah's voice was beginning to tremble. You can tell me when and where, Xavier answered. Sensing that Xavier was about to hang up, Elijah hurriedly mumbled a date and time and waited for Xavier's reply. All right, I'll be there on time, Xavier answered coolly. Although Xavier had hung up already, Elijah couldn't bear to put down his phone. He was excited. After so many years, Xavier was finally willing to meet him. Was this a good start? At the Riverside Villa, Xavier stood by the window with his hands behind his back. Aiden was standing behind him. He didn't expect Xavier would meet Mr. Elijah. Was it really time for him? Are you sure you want to meet Elijah? Aiden asked with trepidation. Xavier didn't turn around. He just stood there quietly. They would have to meet sooner or later. Yes, I think it's time, Xavier said after a while. Then what are you prepared to do about the others? Aiden asked. We'll see when we get to that, Xavier answered. Aiden felt Xavier was really going to make his move this time. Would this be a silent war? Or would it be bloody? Everything that would happen now would be unpredictable. On the day of his meeting with Elijah, Xavier didn't wear a suit. Instead, he wore something casual and went out. Xavier arrived at the appointed place in advance to wait for Elijah. He first ordered something to drink and then some snacks. Soon, the sound of crutches came from behind him. Xavier knew that Elijah had come. Elijah's voice sounded out. 
You came really early. You're early, too. Please, Xavier said, gesturing him to sit down. Elijah leaned on his walking stick. He walked to the opposite side of Xavier and sat down. He saw Xavier had already ordered something. He smiled slightly. Do you need me to order something else? Elijah asked. He was worried Xavier wasn't used to eating this. Xavier shook his head. No need. Elijah had a lot of things to say. He didn't know where to start. I thought you would bring Ophelia with you, Elijah added after a long pause. Xavier picked up a cup of tea. You all like to ask about Ophelia all the time. Everyone who talks to me always starts with her. A little boring, don't you think? Elijah was surprised for a moment. Perhaps he was worried there would be an awkward silence, so he could only start with someone he was familiar with. I'm sorry about that, Elijah said awkwardly. No, I'm sorry, that was rude of me, Xavier answered. Elijah looked a bit more restrained. He didn't know how to move his hands. After all, this was the first time Xavier had sat down face to face with him in many years. I already know about your marriage to Ophelia, Elijah continued. Xavier wasn't surprised. You can't digest the fact that she's not a part of your family anymore? Elijah frowned. Initially, he had taken a fancy to Ophelia because he wanted Xavier to be with her. At that time, the circumstances were such that he had to get Damon married to Ophelia. But fate was strange. Ophelia was meant to be with Xavier, and not Damon, Elijah mused to himself. Seeing the expression on Elijah's face, Xavier continued. Looks like you don't like the sound of Ophelia being married to me, huh? No, Elijah immediately replied. She's a very good person, and I'm glad that you are together. That's what I want to say. Don't misunderstand me. Xavier didn't answer. He looked at the cup of tea in front of him quietly. Elijah didn't know what his son was thinking, but since he was willing to come out and meet him today, he thought it was a good start. Xavier, I really have no ulterior motives. I just want you to be happy, Elijah added. Xavier glanced at Elijah. I appreciate that. I met you today to say something. Elijah nodded. You tell me. I don't want to see anyone from the Hoffman family in front of Ophelia and I again. Ever, Xavier directly said. Ophelia doesn't know these things, and I don't want her to know. I think you know why, he added. Elijah looked at Xavier, especially his eyes. They were too similar to his mother's. Of course, he knew the reason, but he didn't have many days left, so he wanted to see his son a few more times. Was this too much to ask? Xavier, I hope you can return home to your family, Elijah still pleaded. Xavier smiled bitterly. Do you think I'll go back? I have nothing to do with you or your family. Elijah began talking. You are, my surname is Woods, not Hoffman, Xavier said. I still have things to do in a while. I said what I had to say. I hope you can keep your promise. Xavier looked at Elijah and said. Xavier stood up. I've already paid. Order whatever you want. Xavier! Elijah exclaimed. However, he was unable to take a step forward, so he let Xavier leave. Andrew saw all of this. He didn't expect to see it, so Elijah had met Xavier. Andrew thought he should have come earlier. That way, he might have been able to hear what they were talking about. Andrew stood not far away and watched Xavier leave. He clenched his hands. He couldn't just sit there and wait. If he didn't act now, he certainly wouldn't be able to do anything. He left his lunch midway and went to the company to discuss what he'd seen with his father. When Robert heard what had happened, he was furious. Dad, what should we do? If Xavier returns, that's the end of us getting anything, Andrew said angrily. Robert was silent. Through what seemed like a long time, he reproachfully said, Well, seems like the plan didn't work. Dad, don't blame me. You forced me to do this. This is your entire fault. Andrew was spewing nonsense, while Robert just sat there and thought. Then Andrew anxiously continued. Something Now, will you stop and let me think? I am not going to let them get away with this. We have to kick the old man out. That's the only way we're going to get anything, Robert said. Andrew smiled smugly when he heard that. Seriously? You sure? Yes. Robert nodded. He had been waiting for years to do this. He couldn't find a reason. Now, he had one. Ella walked past the office just in time to hear what was going on. She froze. The father-son duo was going to take control of the corporation. She had to tell Xavier about this immediately. John received a message from her later in the day. 
He was stunned and scrambled to inform Xavier. What should we do next? He asked Xavier, kneading his hands together in stress. Xavier sat there quietly, thinking about something. Nick looked at John. We don't even know how the two are going to deal with Elijah. John added, They're ruthless. They wouldn't shy away from killing him. He's silent. Xavier looked up in anger, but quickly restrained himself. Was Robert ruthless enough to kill Elijah? John was still waiting for word from Xavier. Get Ella to Sequoia, Xavier said. John was stunned. What? Say, that doesn't matter. Get her to Sequoia quickly. Project, the data on their hands, none of that is important right now. Robert and Andrew are cautious people, but we know their strengths. And more importantly, we know their weaknesses. It won't be difficult to use them against them. But if we get the financial data, everything might be even simpler, Nick said, having heard everything Xavier and John were discussing. This is a crucial opportunity. We can't let go of it. Xavier glanced at Nick. I know what you think, but Ella has to leave. What are you doing this for? John was puzzled. Xavier knew his identity would be discovered soon. It wouldn't be good for him if Ophelia and Ella found out. Do as I say, and if she doesn't listen, cut off all communication between us immediately, Xavier ordered. Are you talking about cutting off our relationship with Ella? John asked. Yes, Xavier answered. When John told Ella about Xavier's instructions, she was shocked. My job said, what should I do? Ella could not understand. It's also an opportunity. And you up deal with Elijah. They will definitely let down their guard. We can get their financial statements immediately after that happens, Ella argued. She seemed like she didn't want to listen. John was helpless. He understood, but she didn't have much choice. He had to do what Xavier wanted. Mr. Woods said that if you don't leave, don't contact us from now on. You're on your own. You've got nothing to do with us. Do you understand? John told Ella. Ella felt she was stabbed with a knife when she heard those words. Xavier was ruthless. He wouldn't allow her to enter at her own will, nor would he allow her to retreat. If she left, the job she set out to do would remain incomplete. But if she didn't leave, she would be going against Xavier. What should she do now? John looked at Ella. Ella, you're an intelligent woman. You should know what to do. Ella squeezed her hands. John, can I ask you something? Are he and Ophelia serious about each other? That's none of your business. John stood up. You should know his temper. He should know that he deserves better than someone like her, Ella said, her eyes shining with unshed tears. John looked at her coldly. Ella, there are some things we shouldn't discuss. Do you think he doesn't know about your meeting with Ophelia? After he said this, John stomped out. Ella was stunned when she heard this. Xavier knew about it. Why hadn't he said anything? What did this mean? Flustered, Ella picked up her phone to call Nick. You know all about my meeting with Ophelia, Ella immediately asked. Yes. Then why hasn't Xavier said anything yet? Why do you think so? Silent treatment. Is he punishing me? Don't make wild guesses. Hang up the phone now. With this, Nick slammed the phone down on his desk. Ella put down her phone, tears streaming down her face. She still couldn't figure out Xavier's thoughts. Closing her eyes, she let her tears flow. The next day, Ella went to Andrew, her eyes puffy and her face haggard. Seeing Ella's resignation letter on the table, he was shocked. What happened to you? Andrew asked. I'm sorry. I don't think I'm right for this position, Ella replied. Andrew saw her face and immediately became suspicious. Something must have happened. He knew how capable Ella was. He needed someone like that on his side. May I know why you want to resign? Andrew asked. Ella smiled helplessly. Personal reasons. Andrew stood up. You don't really want to leave, do you? Mr. Andrew, I... Ella, I need you. Andrew saw. Ella didn't think about what Andrew had said. This was the first time a man had spoken to her like this and she couldn't help but feel strange. Ella, you're the most outstanding assistant I've ever had, Andrew said, his words dripping with genuine love. Ella was moved. The reason she had stayed behind was to find favor with Xavier. If Ella didn't stay, then the chances of her getting close to him were slim. Moreover, Xavier still had Ophelia with him. But if Ella stayed, she would be able to earn some money for herself and forever lose Xavier. 
If she didn't stay, she didn't know how she was going to get another job soon. John had given her some money, but it wasn't much. Andrew continued, seeing that Ella was hesitating. Ella, if you have something to take care of, then I can let you take care of it on your own time. Take as much leave as you want. However, I hope that you'll not leave the company. I have a lot of things that I need your help with. Ella looked conflicted. She had to choose between love and a living. Mr. Andrew, I... Andrew pushed the resignation letter back into Ella's hands. Ella, I can give you a few days to think it over. You're excellent in every way. I need you here. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. I really appreciate your faith in me. I'll think about it. Give me some time, Ella said. With that, Ella took her resignation letter and walked out of Andrew's office. For the first time ever, she felt lost. She'd always known what she wanted. Now, she wasn't sure. Ella had come to New York to help Xavier. Everything seemed to have gone off track. After leaving, Ella came to Sequoia Turner. She wanted to try and see if she could meet with Xavier. She sat in a coffee shop across the building and waited. Suddenly, she saw Xavier and Nick returning from somewhere. They exited the car and entered the building. She sat in the cafe, hoping Xavier would come down alone at some point. She waited until Xavier and Ophelia appeared outside the building. They stood by the side of the road, holding hands, waiting for the car to pick them up. Xavier helped Ophelia tidy up her crumpled skirt and then gently pushed away a strand of hair from her face. Why? Ella's fingernails dug into her palm, threatening to draw blood. Why would Xavier choose to be with Ophelia? What kind of magic did this girl have? Ella had been waiting for him for so many years, but he never even looked at her, let alone liked her in that way. And now he was treating Ophelia like his entire life depended on her. How did this make sense? Ella saw Xavier helping Ophelia into the car and then got in. The car drove away quickly. Ella pressed a hand to her heart and closed her eyes, forcing the stinging tears to remain put. However, Ella couldn't accept it. How could she lose to Ophelia? Previously, she had wanted to secretly advise Damon to get Ophelia back. She knew this was risky. She was well aware of Xavier's methods. Ella took out her phone and called Andrew. Mr. Andrew, I've changed my mind. I don't want to resign. Really? Great. Andrew was pleased. But I want to take a few days off to see my parents. No problem. Andrew agreed immediately. Anything was better than a resignation, he thought. Ella put down her phone and thought, Xavier, you forced this onto me. Don't blame me now. Ella picked her phone up again and booked a plane ticket. She had to tell all of this to Norris. This was her trump card. She was sure this would change things for her. Xavier would have to listen to his old man. Norris would definitely raise hell when he knew what was going on with Xavier and Ophelia. Ella laughed. Just a few more days, Ophelia. Then I'll have Xavier all to myself. In the car, Ophelia couldn't help but sniff and wipe her nose with a tissue. What's wrong? Have you caught a cold? Xavier quickly asked. Ophelia shook her head. No, it's just an itchy nose. Xavier pulled Ophelia's hand. The weather started to change. You should take care of yourself. Don't worry about me too much, darling. I'm fine, Ophelia said with a smile. After saying that, the two of them looked at their phones. Ophelia had gotten some very crucial information about the project today. Xavier saw John had sent him information about Mrs. Hoffman. John also told Xavier that Ella didn't resign. He frowned slightly. So Ella had decided to be stupid then. Fine. She would regret it anyway. Xavier told John to send someone to keep an eye on Ella. Suddenly, he felt something heavy on his arm. Ophelia had fallen asleep. It seemed she had stayed up late last night to do planning and hadn't gotten any sleep. Xavier reached for Ophelia and picked up the phone in her hand. Quickly browsing through her phone, he saw she'd already made a plan, but it wasn't ironclad. Xavier made a few notes on his phone, giving himself a mental reminder to discuss them with her when they got home. Car suddenly screeched to a halt, and Xavier and Ophelia almost rammed into the seats in front of them. Xavier looked outside, squinting at the sight of a red BMW blocking the front of the car. Go down and take a look, he told the driver. Yes, sir. The driver got down and walked over to the BMW to see what the problem was. 
Xavier looked at Ophelia, who was still sleeping soundly in his arms. He was relieved. Mr. Xavier, it seems like Miss Emily and her friend were in that car. Both of them seemed blackout drunk. When Xavier heard that, he frowned. Why was Emily everywhere? Ever since he'd warned Richard, he hadn't heard much from his family. What was Emily up to today? Was she actually drunk, or was she just faking it? Call the police. Tell them this is a DUI, he ordered the driver. The ringing of the police siren was so loud that it woke Ophelia up. She was alone in the car. She looked outside and saw Xavier talking to the police. She immediately opened the car door. Xavier, she called out. Xavier turned around to see Ophelia had woken up. He immediately walked over to her. Why did you get out of the car? It's too cold, Xavier said as he took off his jacket and put it on Ophelia. Ophelia smiled and asked, What happened? Someone got drunk and nearly hit our car, Xavier said, stroking her cheek. Ophelia was shocked. She was still a little scared as she recalled the car accident from before. Were these people crazy or something? Driving drunk in the middle of the city? Xavier supported Ophelia. Go back to the car first. Ophelia was about to nod her head when she heard a familiar voice. I am drunk! Seeing the police, Ophelia frowned slightly. She went to check the license plate of the car. It was really Emily's. She didn't expect Emily to do such a stupid thing. Emily seemed to have noticed Ophelia as well. She pushed aside the police officers and staggered over. Ophelia, I really didn't expect to see you here, she stammered, reeking of alcohol. Emily giggled and nearly fell on top of Ophelia. Are you all right? Xavier was immediately concerned. Ophelia placed her hand on her chest to calm herself down. I'm fine. Xavier frowned and glanced at Emily coldly. Stay far away from her. William, let me tell you, this person here, my sister stepsister is scum, Emily said, smirking. Back then, she got married to Damon because, well, I'm sure her reputation precedes her. Xavier stopped her. If you continue to speak without thinking, I will. I'm telling the truth. If you want someone to sleep with, I'm sure you'll find scores of women out there. I can guarantee I'm better in bed than she is, Emily smirked. Listening to Emily, Ophelia was disgusted. Ophelia, what are you pretending not to know? Do you know something else? Back then, Damon and I slept together as well. This is normal, you know. Sleeping with people is normal. Emily teased her. After that, Emily reached out to grab Xavier, but Ophelia pushed her away. You have to touch him. Jeez, why do you care? Emily said. I want you to touch him. Ophelia yelled at her. Xavier quietly watched her try to protect him. He liked this side of her. Protective, assertive. Cute. Emily glanced at Ophelia and mocked her. Why didn't I see you be this possessive about Damon before? You want to bet whether I can seduce your husband? I mean, I, I can do it. You know I can. <laughs> Scared, Emily stammered. Ophelia looked at Emily and felt sorry for her. What else did she have in her life besides seducing people? Xavier is not between you and me. He's not a demon. And I will not let you take away from the belongs to me right now, Ophelia said, her voice assertive and firm. The police walked over to Emily and ordered, Miss, your alcohol concentration is too high. You'll need to come with us. I'm drunk, Emily yelled audibly slurring her words. However, Emily was forcibly taken away by the police. Xavier put his arm around Ophelia. Ignore her. Xavier, I know she's hopeless, but I worry about her. Why are some people so obsessed with this? Always thinking about things that don't belong to them. Xavier hugged Ophelia. It's just how people work, my love. Even if there are people who are getting better, there's people like her who are getting worse. A gust of cold wind blew past them. Ophelia shivered. She leaned into Xavier's arms, and he hugged her tightly. He wanted to protect her from the wind, the rain, and everything that would hurt her. That night, just as Ophelia was about to sleep, her phone rang loudly. What could it be at this time? Ruth began to yell at Ophelia on the phone. You are very hot, I thought you. Do you want to 
I don't understand what you mean. She was drunk and she rammed our car into ours. What's there to be heartless about here? Ophelia was taken aback. You know what I'm talking about. You have been guilty for talking to admit. Ophelia frowned. I don't get what you're talking about. Oh, you're one smart ass, aren't you? Ruth said angrily. My house are close to you. Inside my house, people are... Just as Ophelia was about to say something, Xavier reached out and took her phone. This has nothing to do with Ophelia. I'm telling you what I'm telling Emily, Xavier said. Get a lawyer ready. Ruth was at a loss for words. I don't care what kind of CEO you are. I'm not afraid of you. Then wait and see, Xavier said. Mr. William, I have a warning for you, too. She's not worth the trouble, Ruth continued. Xavier smirked. Don't tell me what's good for me and what's not. Emily has been disgusting to my wife. As Ophelia's husband, I don't think you should tell me who's right and who isn't. With that, Xavier hung up. Ophelia looked at Xavier softly and smiled. What had she done to deserve this gem? The next day, the matter was reported on the news. Emily had driven while drunk and almost crashed headfirst into the Sequoia CEO's car. Luckily, the driver avoided the car just in time to avoid any casualties. Afterward, the CEO also informed her family. The moment the news came out, it spread like wildfire. A lot of people were ridiculing Emily online. Ophelia was upset when she saw the news. Are you all right? Jane asked worriedly. Ophelia shook her head. I'm fine. Don't worry. She didn't want to think too much about her family right now. She resumed her work. She looked at the suggestion Xavier gave her last time and adjusted the plan. By lunch, she was exhausted. After she ate, she fell asleep on the table. She'd been low for the past few days and had been in no mood to eat, but she'd forced herself to eat at least a little bit. Before she knew it, she dozed off for an entire afternoon before she was woken up by Jane. Hey, how are you? Jane asked. Is the work pressure getting to you? Is that why you're not in a good mood? I really can't stay up late at night. I'm so tired all the time, but I know how important it is to get this done on time, Ophelia explained. Oh, you have to draw a line between your work and other things. You'll collapse at the rate you've been working at some point, Jane tried to convince her. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks for looking up for me, Janie, Ophelia said with a smile, and she lightly squeezed Jane's hand. When she got off work, Ophelia walked unsteadily to the car, feeling like she might fall down at any moment. She leaned back and closed her eyes. Aiden saw that Ophelia was not looking well, so he didn't say much and drove her back home. At this moment, a car was parked in front of the River Bay Villa. Norris looked at the villa outside. Xavier really knew how to choose a place. Are we there yet? Mary asked. Norris held Mary's hand. Yes, my dear. The two got out of the car quickly, and the driver helped them carry their luggage to the front of the house. Norris supported Mary as they walked towards the exquisite mansion. Is Xavier not happy that we suddenly came here? Norris said angrily. What's there to be unhappy about? I would have come to New York sooner or later. Mary was still a little worried that Xavier would be unhappy that their arrival would affect his plans. The driver knocked on the door. Liza opened it. When she saw Norris and Mary... She was stunned. Miss Norris, what a surprise. Why? Can't we come in? No, 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 nothing like that. Of course not. Come in, come in. She helped Mary sit down and said, I'll get you some tea. All right. Mary smelled the scent of jasmine wafting out of the kitchen. It had been a long time since she had a cup of her favorite tea. Here you go. Liza put the cup where Mary could reach it. Norris looked around before asking, Where's Xavier? He went out to do some work. Norris also picked up his teacup. And what about that woman? Liza was surprised, but she restrained herself and asked, You mean Ophelia? Norris squinted his eyes. Have they gotten married? Liza didn't dare lie to him. She's a good person, and she's nice to Mr. Xavier as well. This is simply outrageous! Since I told about them, and she's not just some woman, she's the daughter of Richard, the CEO! Norris said angrily. 
Mary knew about Xavier's marriage, but she didn't think the person her grandson was into would be someone like this. That day, Ella had gone to their house and told her that Xavier was with a married woman, and this woman was Damon Hoffman's wife. Upon hearing this news, Norris could not sit still any longer and said he would come over immediately. It's only at Mary's insistence that he didn't come over right at that moment. Calm down, Mary said. We'll find out exactly what's happening when Xavier returns. I wouldn't agree to it anyway. You can discuss all you want, Norris said. Liza immediately went into the other room and called Xavier. Xavier told her he would be back soon. He wanted to go home before Ophelia came back, so he could salvage the situation. Liza immediately went out, and, hearing the sound of a car, thought it was him. It turned out to be Ophelia. Oh God, what would she do now? Ophelia braced herself and walked in front of Liza. Hi Liza, all okay? Hi Ophelia, you so busy, is everything good? Liza was all fidgety and couldn't look straight at her. Ophelia felt that Liza was acting strange today. What's wrong? Liza just gulped loudly and looked at the door. She wished Xavier was here. Ophelia's arrival would make this much worse. Ophelia walked through the door and saw two suitcases. Could it be someone from Xavier's family? Liza, who's here? Liza didn't even dare to raise her head. It's Mr. Xavier's grandparents. Ophelia was taken aback by this. What were they doing here? And at that, so suddenly. Seeing Liza worried, she said, It's okay, don't be so stressed. We'll handle it. You should wait for Mr. Xavier to come back before you go in. Seeing that no one came in, Norris walked to the door. Liza, is Xavier back yet? Just as he finished asking, Norris saw Ophelia. She was very simple. She had no makeup or fancy clothing. Her eyes were clear and unblinking, but she seemed unsteady and tired. Ophelia looked at Norris for a while and was reminded of Xavier. Hello, Mr. Norris. I'm Ophelia. Pleased to meet you, Ophelia said, stretching out her hand. Norris was mad at his grandson, but flustered upon meeting Ophelia. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were both coming today. Otherwise, I would have come earlier, Ophelia continued, wringing her hands. She was a little confused and a little nervous. This was her first time seeing any of Xavier's family. However, she tried to keep calm and appear unbothered. Hello, Prince. Fancy seeing you here today. Xavier's voice sounded over Ophelia's shoulder. Seeing him walk in, Ophelia calmed down. He stood in front of her. She turned pale. Not feeling well? Xavier reached out his hand to touch Ophelia's face. She smiled nervously and nodded her head as if to say no. Xavier frowned. His wife didn't seem like herself today. What was wrong? Xavier, what's the meaning of this? Norris immediately interjected. Xavier looked away from Ophelia. What's the meaning of what? Norris looked at Xavier angrily. What? You get married and you don't even inform me? Did you forget that I raised you? Am I not supposed to know this much? I was going to tell you. I just didn't get time. You say your name once again? Norris asked Ophelia gruffly. Ophelia was already weak and dizzy. She steadied herself. Ophelia, my name is Ophelia. Xavier felt her trembling, so he held her by the waist to steady her. Norris had heard a lot of things about Ophelia from Ella, and they were mostly not great. He had come to his grandson's house to be prepared to be let down. What is it? Chat got your tongue? Can't say anything else than your name? Norris snorted and said. Ophelia lowered her head. I'm sorry, I... You didn't do anything wrong. Why are you apologizing? Xavier looked at Ophelia and said. Xavier was perplexed. His grandfather was a tough person to impress, yes, but not rude. At least not before. He was being very rude to Ophelia at the moment. It was clear someone had been telling him things to provoke him against Ophelia. Otherwise, both of them would not have come back without any warning. Mary's voice came from the living room. Is William back? Ophelia jerked up and looked in the direction of the voice. She had nearly forgotten there was one more person to deal with. Yes, I'm back, Xavier called out. Well, come in, Mary said. Norris snorted and walked into the living room. Xavier looked at Ophelia. Her face was paler than before, and she seemed to be trembling slightly. Ophelia, you don't look good. Don't worry, everything's going to be all right. Don't be nervous. 
We'll figure this out, Xavier said, stroking her cheek. Ophelia forced a smile at Xavier. I'm fine. Come on, let's go inside. She didn't tell Xavier that she wasn't feeling well. She was dizzy and her legs felt weak. However, she forced herself to walk with Xavier and meet Mary. She seemed very sweet. When he walked into the living room, Xavier saw Norris had already sat down, with Mary at his side. Hello, Grandma. Xavier smiled at her. Then, he grabbed Ophelia's hand, pulling her to his side. Allow me to introduce you to my wife, Ophelia, Xavier said, while looking at Norris and Mary. Xavier looked back at Ophelia. Ophelia, these are my grandparents. Hello, it's so nice to meet both of you, and what a lovely surprise. Xavier's told me so much about you both. Norris looked at Ophelia and didn't say anything, purposefully trying to make her uncomfortable. He looked coldly at Xavier, daring him to say something. Xavier glared back and put his arms around Ophelia. She looked at Norris cautiously. Mary seemed to have noticed something was wrong. She reached out her hand and patted Norris's. That's enough. Don't scare the poor girl. I didn't do anything. Why are you all so nervous? Seeing that Norris didn't move, Mary spoke first. Sit down and talk to me, my dear. Xavier immediately sat down. Ophelia was about to sit down when she became very dizzy and lost her balance, falling down next to Xavier. Xavier immediately got down on his knees and hoisted her up. She had been strange all evening, and now this? He asked with concern. Are you all right? Ophelia used Xavier's hand to steady herself. I'm fine. Looking at Ophelia's pale face and lips, Xavier knew something was wrong. Mary reached out to Xavier and asked, her voice dripping with concern. William, what's the matter with her? Just when she did that, Ophelia finally saw Mary's eyes. They were not looking at her or Xavier. Instead, they were staring into space as if they didn't know where to look. She immediately looked towards Xavier and saw him nod. She realized that Mary was blind. She reached out to shake Mary's hand. Xavier helped Ophelia to sit down. Sit down and we'll talk. She glanced at Norris as if she was waiting for him to say something. Ignore him, Xavier added. Mary reached out her hand. You're Ophelia? Ophelia immediately held her hand. Yes, your hand is so cold, my dear. You must take care of yourself. It'll get difficult for you later, you know, when it comes to pregnancy and such, Mary said warmly. Hearing that, Norris fumed. Had his wife gone crazy? Mary ignored Norris and continued talking to Ophelia. Are you eating well, my dear? Yes. I am, Ophelia replied. Listening to her gentle voice, Mary felt she was a good person. William had chosen to marry Ophelia, and she believed in his judgment. I came in such a rush, I didn't even get a chance to buy you something, Mary continued. Ophelia was overcome with emotion. I really need anything. You came here to meet me. That's, that's the first gift. Mary tightened her grip on Ophelia's hand and smiled. This is family tradition. Norris grunted. Our family's tradition. It's not her family yet. Don't pay attention to him. He's just got a temper. Xavier said to Norris, Let's talk in the study. About what? I've already made it clear. I don't like this woman. And you. Do you even know what's wrong with your head? She's married. She's a daughter-in-law of Elijah. Every time he heard Norris say this, Xavier's frown deepened. He looked at Norris with a straight face. What is it? Did I say something wrong? Huh? Norris asked. Ophelia looked away when she heard those words. She couldn't erase her past. Norris stared at Ophelia and said, What do you have to say to this? Ophelia's divorced, not married. And this matter was my decision. It has nothing to do with Ophelia, Xavier spoke up. So it's you who has feelings for this woman, right? Norris retorted. Xavier nodded. Norris became even more angry. Xavier, if you want to marry someone, think about our business first. What are you doing? Don't you with the enemy? Then beyond that, who's already been used by another man? Xavier interrupted him. Don't you dare. Don't you dare say that. Mary immediately stopped them. Stop doing I can't any more. Norris quickly flew to Mary's side. Darling, are you all right? I'm tired. I think I'll go nap for a little while. Mary said, putting her hand on her head. 
She had not flown for many years, but this time, Mary was still feeling somewhat uncomfortable after the flight. Ophelia was concerned when she heard that. What's wrong? Do you need me to call a doctor? Mary was touched. She held her hand. No, dear, I'll be fine once I take a nap. Are you sure? Yes, yes. Now, don't fret. Mary smiled weakly. Norris put his hands in the air. Oh, for crying out loud, really? You think you're going to impress me with that? I just offered to get a doctor. What the hell's wrong with that? Ophelia was a little miffed by Norris's hostility toward her. She had been nothing but nice to him. Mary frowned. Up, Norris. Norris immediately shut his mouth, but he still stared at Ophelia. Although he was old, his actions were childish. However, the care he showed toward Mary really warmed Ophelia's heart. He seemed to love her very much. Xavier was a bit worried when he saw Ophelia's face. When she tried to get up, Xavier held her and asked gently, Can you stand? Ophelia nodded. Although her face was pale, Mary's words had bolstered Ophelia's confidence. He watched Ophelia stand up to help Mary lie down as she put a blanket over her. Until the doctor came, Ophelia thought she'd massage her head a little bit. Xavier and Norris watched quietly from the sidelines. Norris seemed to soften a bit, seeing Mary so at ease. Is the pressure okay? Ophelia said softly. Mary nodded with her eyes closed. Just perfect. Hearing Mary's words, Ophelia calmed down. Mary's headache slowly began to dissipate. She asked Ophelia, Where did you learn to do this? I often did volunteer work in a nursing home, and I picked it up there. Ophelia replied with a smile. Mary couldn't help but feel that Ella had lied to them about this sweet girl. She knew Ella had been after Xavier for a long time. Could it be she was trying to win him back? How could her grandson have such bad taste? If Ophelia was the kind of person Ella had described, they wouldn't have been married. What do you think? Feel better? Ophelia's voice interrupted Mary's thoughts. Mary laughed. I feel a lot better now. Thank you. You're welcome, Ophelia replied. She then helped Mary sit up. Mary relaxed. My headache has disappeared. Ophelia smiled. A drop of sweat trickled down her face. She felt as if she had been hollowed out, as if everything was a bit blurry. She was dizzy, and her entire body felt as though it was floating. Xavier noticed and immediately sat down beside Ophelia. What's the matter with you? I'm fine, Ophelia replied. Xavier frowned. He pushed aside Ophelia's hair and found that her forehead was covered in a cold sweat. I'm going to get a doctor. Ophelia wanted to say something, but Xavier had already sent Aiden away. Norris also felt there was something wrong with Ophelia, but he was a little worried and didn't say anything, lest these people mistake it for a peace offering. Mary reached out to touch Ophelia's hand. Are you really not feeling well? No, I'm fine. Ophelia's voice was weak. Xavier helped her up. You're sick, my love. Let me get you to our room. Ophelia stood, struggling to stay straight. It seemed like she couldn't hold on much longer. Fine, I'm overreacting, so go take a nap. It won't make you happy. Then Ophelia turned to Norris and Mary. You've been feeling a bit tired and uncomfortable these past few days. You'd better get some rest, dear. Mary was worried. Xavier tried to let go of Ophelia. Can you stand okay? Ophelia nodded. However, she had barely taken two steps when her vision blurred and she toppled forward. Ophelia! She heard Xavier's voice. Faint as blood. Urgent. Ophelia slipped away into a blur. Xavier was very nervous as he carried the unconscious Ophelia. Ophelia! Xavier called again. She did not move. Xavier panicked as he looked at her white face. How is she? Mary asked nervously. Xavier shook his head. He carried Ophelia upstairs to their room. He had never felt this scared before. After putting Ophelia on the bed, he pushed her hair away and touched her cold face. Ophelia, I won't let anything happen to you, whispered Xavier. Norris and Mary stood by the bed. They all looked at Ophelia, waiting for her to make a movement or at least lift a finger to ensure she was okay. After a few moments of silence, Norris asked, Anything? Nothing. Grandpa, you and Grandma should go rest. I'll be right here. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Norris nodded. Is she going to be okay? Xavier sighed. Grandpa, I hope you won't make things difficult for her in the future. 
I'll explain the matter between her and the Hoffmans when she recovers. Trust me when I say there's nothing to worry about. I know better than anyone what kind of person she is. Mary took Norris's hand. Very well. We'll leave you be for now. Call us if you need anything. Norris, let's go. As they were about to leave, Aiden showed up with the doctor. Xavier immediately stepped aside while the doctor checked up on Ophelia. Norris and Mary also stood aside, awaiting the results. Talk to me, said Xavier when the doctor finished. She looked at Xavier. Um, has she had any symptoms recently? Her appetite's been low these past few days, and she hasn't been very energetic. Maybe the medicine isn't working? The doctor shook her head. Shouldn't be happening. She should be feeling better. Any idea why she suddenly fainted? She seems to be nauseated constantly for the past few days, Xavier added. Mary suddenly realized something and gasped. Wait, these doesn't seem to it to me. Xavier was stunned, but he recovered. What do you mean, Grandma? Mary stepped forward. <laughs> Silly boy. Ophelia might be pregnant. Xavier was shocked. This wasn't something he had anticipated. He and Ophelia had never actually discussed this. Was it possible? He looked carefully at the doctor, who nodded. That's very possible. I was hoping to do the blood test once we took her to the clinic, but now seems like the right time. She took out a syringe and started the procedure. Meanwhile, Xavier looked at Ophelia. Could it really be? Mary laid a hand on Xavier's shoulder. William, don't worry. It'll be fine. Grandma, I'm sorry I couldn't take better care of you. Mary smiled. It's not your fault. We showed up without even telling you. Of course you weren't prepared for us. What happens? Norris didn't say anything, either. This wasn't what he wanted to see. He silently walked out of the room. Mary continued. Your grandfather came here in a hurry because he was worried you'd been duped somehow. Of course I know that. I know, Grandpa is always doing everything for my own good, Xavier said. Don't worry about that now. It's in the past. Now, since you really like Ophelia, we must plan things accordingly. I won't object to her. I like her. Furthermore, if she is pregnant with a child that belongs to the Woods family, you must take good care of her, Mary said. Don't worry, Grandma. I will, Xavier answered. The doctor called later in the day with the results of the blood test. It was Aiden who picked up the call. He was slightly nervous. What did the test say? He asked. Congratulations. Ophelia's pregnant. Aiden was ecstatic when he heard that. That's excellent. Are you sure? Yes, it's true. The doctor said. Okay, I'll tell Xavier right away, Aiden exclaimed. The doctor continued. But you must pay attention to Ophelia's nutrition now. We will. Before Aiden could go upstairs to Xavier, Mary, who had heard the phone ring, came out of her room. She was anxious to know the result. Aiden, is that the doctor? Is there any news? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Wood is pregnant, Aiden happily proclaimed. Mary's excitement could not be contained. Great. It's excellent news. After more than 20 years, the Woods family is about to get bigger. When Norris heard the news, he was also incredibly happy. The Woods finally had an heir. Xavier kissed Ophelia's hand when Aiden delivered the news. My love, thank you. She was still resting. She had a tiring day, so he didn't bother her. He gently touched her belly, amazed that she carried their child. When Ophelia awoke, it was past midnight. She opened her eyes and looked at the ceiling. Suddenly, she realized that someone was holding her hand. It was Xavier. Xavier? Ophelia called out softly. When Xavier heard her voice, he immediately opened his eyes. You're awake? Yes. Ophelia nodded. Did I get some water? Xavier rushed to get her some water. He brought her a glass, helped her to sit up, hugged her, and held the glass in front of her. Here, drink. Ophelia took several mouthfuls in a hurry and began to cough. Xavier patted her back. Drink slowly. No one's trying to fight you for it. All right. Ophelia nodded. I'll go slow. Xavier looked at her lips. They were slightly chapped. Finally, she said, that's enough. Xavier put the cup on the table and helped Ophelia wipe drops of water from the corners of her mouth. Ophelia's face turned a little pink all of a sudden. When Xavier saw it, he laughed. Still shy? Ophelia buried her head in Xavier's shoulders. Ophelia, I have something to tell you, said Xavier. His voice was level. She could sense he was serious. She lifted her head. It has something to do with me, I suppose. 
She guessed this easily, because she had just fainted. Obviously, there was something wrong with her. Yes, Xavier nodded. I asked the doctor to check up on you. Is there something wrong with me? Ophelia asked, tense. Xavier shook his head. No. He gently placed his hand on Ophelia's stomach. In here. Ophelia placed her hands there. What do you mean? It's in my stomach. Our child, Ophelia, Xavier said lightly. You're pregnant. For a long time, Ophelia said nothing. She kept thinking about Xavier's last words. You're pregnant. Ophelia looked at her belly, pondering the words, replaying them again and again in her head. You're pregnant. Eventually, she looked up at Xavier and smiled. They were going to have a child together. How blissful was that? Ophelia wondered if their child would look more like her or Xavier. Ultimately, she hoped that the child looked like him. After all, he was so much prettier than her. What's wrong? Xavier finally said after she was silent for a long while. Ophelia shook her head. I'm fine. I was just thinking how nice it would be if the child was like you. Xavier hugged her tightly. Ophelia, if you aren't feeling well at any time, let me know immediately. Ophelia nodded, then suddenly remembered something. Where are your grandparents? They're resting, Xavier answered. Ophelia lowered her head humbly. I'm hopeless, aren't I? First time I meet your grandparents and they see me like this. Xavier sighed. He put his chin on Ophelia's head and stroked her hair. They aren't unreasonable people, Ophelia. Don't think too much about it. But Ophelia couldn't relax that easily. She knew that Norris didn't like her. Ella's words came to mind. How could Norris ever agree to Xavier being with her? Ophelia wrapped her arms around Xavier tightly. Xavier, what if Grandpa Norris doesn't like me? He will, Xavier answered. And it doesn't matter what he likes as long as Grandma likes you. She can convince him of anything. Both of them aren't happy with my past. Xavier kissed Ophelia's forehead lightly. I don't mind, Ophelia. These aren't excuses for you to leave. Do you understand? Ophelia nodded, immediately pushing out the little thought that had popped into her head. She had always told herself that she would leave only if Xavier told her he didn't want her. But now, with a baby in the picture, would she even be able to leave without causing significant damage? Ophelia shuddered. The future was filled with even more uncertainty. The next day, when Ophelia awoke, sunlight was already streaming through her window. Are you up? Xavier's voice came from behind her. Yes. He helped her sit up in bed. How do you feel? I feel better now that I've slept, Ophelia replied. Xavier touched her hair. If you don't feel well, remember to take your medicine. The doctor prescribed some for you yesterday. I know. While Xavier was washing up, Ophelia walked to the window and opened it. Light flooded through the whole room, and Ophelia closed her eyes for a moment, letting the sunlight bathe her. She opened her eyes and looked around. In the yard below, she saw two figures. Norris held Mary's hand, and they were walking together. Ophelia felt comforted watching them like that. Everyone deserves someone special in their lives to accompany them, even when they grow old. Ophelia imagined that Xavier and she would also have such moments. Xavier saw Ophelia standing in front of the window in a daze. The picture of her bathed in sunlight was heartwarming to him. He couldn't look away. Later, once she had washed up as well, Xavier and Ophelia changed and went downstairs. Norris and Mary were already eating breakfast. Upon hearing them, Mary immediately asked, Is it William and Ophelia? Yes, Xavier answered. Ophelia also called out to the two of them. Grandpa, Grandma, good morning. How are you feeling, dear? Mary asked. I feel much better now, Ophelia replied. Xavier helped Ophelia into a chair and poured her a glass of milk. Norris glanced at Ophelia with such a thin and weak body. Did she withstand the pressures of labor? He worried about the days to come. Xavier saw Norris looking at his wife and mockingly said, Grandpa, I don't like how you're looking at my wife. Hmph, Norris snorted, looking a bit embarrassed. Last night, 
If Mary hadn't told him that Xavier and Ophelia were married, he would have felt very dumb at some point. However, seeing that she was pregnant, he couldn't say anything. He was still on the fence about Ophelia due to her past. It was only because she was pregnant that he was willing to give her a chance. He promised Mary that he would keep an eye on Ophelia for a while, before deciding to fully accept her into the family. After breakfast was over, Xavier personally sent Ophelia to the company. Norris and Mary were resting at home when Aiden arrived with some information. Mr. Woods, Ella and Andrew are in cahoots. Xavier told her to quit, but she refused, Aiden said. Norris frowned. Be that the Hoffmans are taking care of her affairs. Aiden continued. Perhaps. Actually, she just can't stand Xavier being with Ophelia. Let's wait for Xavier to say something. Yes, Norris said. He felt cheated by Ella. It was an early morning, and Ruth was crying at the Hoffman's house. Helen felt a strong headache coming on as she looked at the disgusting woman in front of her. Haven't you had enough? Helen said. Ruth looked at Helen with tears on her face. Mrs. Hoffman, I beg of you, please save my daughter. What can I do? Helen said sternly. I told her to go and provoke the others. It really was an accident. Now Xavier says he's going to sue Emily. You were from Ophelia. Please, he can stop him now. Ruth begged. Helen didn't think it was true. If it was just a few words, then Xavier wouldn't have behaved like this. Emily must have done something far more unacceptable. Xavier was not a person who tended to make a fuss. When Ruth saw that Helen was ignoring her, she panicked. But she couldn't lose control in front of Helen. She still needed her help. Xavier said Emily had slandered his wife, so he had to sue her. It's soon enough to punish my daughter. This for Ophelia. Helen was shocked. She shouted, Why are they married? She couldn't believe it. Were Xavier and Ophelia married? Elijah also came out of his room. The scene being played before him felt strange to him. Ruth was crying while Helen looked cold and indifferent. What's wrong? he asked. Ruth quickly wiped away her tears. Mr. Hoffman! What happened? Elijah asked again. Before Helen could stop her, Ruth had gone up to Elijah, crying as she said, Mr. Hoffman, can you help my Emily? Elijah didn't answer immediately. He walked to the couch and sat down. What's wrong with her now? Xavier is going to sue Emily for slandering his wife. I see some of the lawyers in New York. I think I'm pretty sure what they mean. They take it because of Xavier. Please help Emily. Family's work that. Elijah frowned as he listened. What was going on with Emily? He knew Xavier and the kind of man he was. He wouldn't lightly accuse someone without reason. He wasn't one of those people who made decisions based on his bruised ego. Something else was going on. Then he asked, What do you mean slander his wife? He said Ophelia is his wife, Ruth immediately answered. Mr. Hoffman, please save Emily, she repeated. Elijah was a little surprised to hear that Xavier had admitted to the marriage between him and Ophelia. Does that mean he would make the announcement public? Helen also noticed Elijah. It seemed like he wasn't clear about the situation either. The more she thought about it, the more unsettled she felt. She clenched her hands tightly. It seemed the day that Xavier returned to the Hoffmans was not far. Elijah finally spoke. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about this. Ruth was furious when she heard this. She scoffed. I never thought the Hoffman family would be afraid of an outsider. I see now you've also reached the ends of your power. She stood up. She had begged and begged, but to no avail. She added, You're heartless! Oh, my daughter! Helen was unwilling to let Ruth run her mouth off like that. She stepped up to her. Ruth, keep your mouth shut! Forget that you're part of this family now! Ruth was too far gone to stop. Not to people. They're with the baby. Me. Future. Helen reached out to slap Ruth. Ruth caught her hand. Such an easy target. Ruth said angrily. I have a future. Shut my sleeve. Helen pulled her hand away. 
Ruth, the only reason your family has anything is because you stole from us. Elijah had a splitting headache, listening to the argument between the two women. Stop arguing, he said as he put his hand on his forehead. Ruth glared at Helen, as if to say they were just going to have to wait and see who was right. Once Ruth left, Elijah called for a doctor. Robert and Andrew had also come home by then. While the doctor was giving Elijah a sedative to help him sleep, Andrew swapped out one of the bottles on Elijah's table. The doctor then told them to pay attention to Elijah's condition. After leaving Elijah's room, Robert and Andrew got together to discuss some important matters. Dad, when do we start? The plan has already started. Right now, it's just slow going. What do you mean? Andrew wondered. Robert continued. From tomorrow onwards, we can use the old man's health as an excuse to let him rest at home. Then we can make arrangements to get rid of all the old man's trusted aides. Andrew looked at his father. Now was not the time to show his cards. He couldn't let his father do everything. If his dad's plans didn't work out, he would be blamed for their failure. It was better to take matters into his own hands. But outwardly, Andrew agreed with Robert. Dad, you have to be careful about these things. Don't worry about that, Robert said with confidence. The old man will be out of his mind soon, and then we can get his will without any hindrance. But for now, we must endure. When Andrew got back to the company, the first thing he noticed when he walked into the office was Ella. Today, she wasn't wearing a crisp work suit, but a long, fashionable dress with hardly any makeup. Ella? he said. Ella stood with a smile. Mr. Hoffman, you're back. Andrew nodded also noticing the luggage by Ella's side. You... She began, but stopped. I just came from the airport, Ella answered. I'm canceling my holiday. You can come to work tomorrow. Andrew sat down. What's the hurry? Why didn't you rest for a few more days? I'm too tired to remain idle, she answered. A vacation is the last thing I need. So please, Mr. Hoffman, is there anything I can do for you? You want to work right now, Andrew smiled. Ella shrugged. I don't mind. Andrew smiled and handed Ella a document. Take this and read it. Prepare me a new report for tomorrow. All right. Ella took the document. Now go and rest for the day, Andrew said. I'll see you tomorrow. Ella smiled. Mr. Hoffman, thank you. With that, Ella dragged her luggage and left. When Ella reached home, she saw John's car parked outside the building. She frowned. Why was he here? Is this what Xavier had warned her about? I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.